gong, 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 gong. Hey, buddies. It's the Bennington Show on a Monday. I'm Ron Bennington. There's Gail Bennington. Yo. I'm Ron Bennington. And uh, today, the Democratic Party starts their four-day breakdown uh, as we put together the road to Trump. No free stuff, no votey. That's what I say. We've got to get all the free stuff. Uh, we were supposed to get um, free school, uh, free loans, uh, free money, or else no Democrat. All lining up for a Trump presidency. Lord knows the man deserves it. Um, I'm excited about the new world order. Vito, you called it early. You're the man. You called Frank, and you called Donald Trump. That's the two big bets that you had this year. But anyway, it's all coming apart in uh, Philadelphia as we speak. Uh, it is a, it's perfect, too, because it's a city of booze, uh, alcohol, and the way to treat entertainers. The leaks came out over the weekend, and it was just basically bad stuff about Bernie. I don't know, for some reason, everybody thought that the Democratic Party won it, uh, Bernie, and the Republican Party won it, Trump, and then they're surprised that that wasn't so. No. It seemed like the first time, when we first started discussing uh, the RNC going first, it was like, oh, it's great to go, it's great to go second, because then you get to have this, like, rebuttal time, but now it feels like who had the most recent train wreck is more what They're it's They're yelling the like. same things. The Bernie people are yelling the same exact stuff. Lock her up. Basically, burn the witch. Um, Never should have had a woman run for president. They're not as strong as us. They're not as fast as us. That's smart. Well, they're smart, but they don't make quick decisions. Trump just said, I'll fix it. And we're like, oh, yeah, yeah. he's a white dude. All right, <laughs> let him go. He's going to do it. But, um, and Trump got the convention bounce that I said that he would get 33 points of a bounce right now. Yes. 33? Yeah. If you go to, uh, 538, there's now a 93% chance that Trump will be our next president. And that's even before the emails came down. So you did it somehow, Vito. I don't know how you did it, but you're the modern day Nostradamus. You're my, you're my political advisor from this point on. <laughs> I'm excited about this role. Uh, big week uh, heading up to Montreal. They just announced new faces. And that's the thing that you uh, that everybody goes to see, and they offer all these kids television shows and movies because they're the new faces. Here's some of the people up there: Tim Dillon, our buddy. All right, nice. Sarah Tolomash pulled awesome. it off. That's awesome. Uh, we have her. Uh, well, Chris is on constant call with her. Evan Williams. All right. So some real new uh, new faces are pals of ours. Um, and then Danny Mathers, the woman who took creep shots in of a fat lady. She's one of the new faces. She's one of the new faces. Her thing was funniest picture that they put her in for. <laughs> that is not the best superlative, but I guess if whatever gets you in the door. She uh, hired MJ's lawyer, which means she's got to be guilty as shit. You know what I mean? By the time you go around and hire a lawyer like that. <laughs> right. I just hope that she gets uh, an umbrella man to take her to court because it seems like that's what went along with the defense last time. It's very time. hot out there and you do need a dude whose only job is to have an umbrella over your head. How For long? some reason, that's all I remember from that trial was like the umbrella leading to and from the courtroom. At I what, can't remember anything that actually happened in the courtroom. I think at one point you stood on top of the car and waved everybody. <laughs> he loved to jump on top of a car. <laughs> It's a good look. But he was just always being led there like a little geisha with his little tiny steps, and he looks so tiny and gentle. What's your name, sir? Michael. 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 He didn't put, I mean, his off stage time was to stay as relaxed as humanly possible. On stage, he's running around, he's walking backwards somehow, no one could ever understand it. And then off stage, I was so tired. Put on cartoons. Help me, please. 
Carry me there. He was like always Michael off stage was like E. T. when the fucking heart life fucked up. <laughs> What's going on with the phones every day, Chris? Crash. When's How the, could it when's crash the big phone when the day? show just started? I don't know. That's impossible what you just explained. Chris had this idea, get new phones. Uh, the old ones work too well. <laughs> well, you didn't have any problems with it. So, you know, now you stay on your toes all the time. It's great. I thought it was going to work out. When's the big switcheroo? We're switching back. I was back. still supposed to be today. Looks like it's happening right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wish I would have scheduled this do, better. Do, do these guys even ask Don if we want new phones? They just come in and they put in something. Yeah, they just they just came in and they switched everything over. Because I feel like when Don knows, he usually gives us a little heads up. So yeah. I have a feeling this was done very sneaky. I, m- I miss when uh, Don walks around with plans for whatever the new studio is. <laughs> That's kind of how I was introduced to Don. He was Mr. Here's, Plan Man. Because this was just the beginning. Yeah. The plans were very exciting to him then. Yeah. But he likes uh, he likes uh, redoing a studio, but unfortunately, these things have to be redone to work, not just kind of look cool. <laughs> um, who's speaking tonight? Do we know? Elizabeth Warren is speaking tonight. I think she is big big headliner tonight. And what's she going to uh, fuck Wall Street? Probably, Good. yeah. That's her go-to gimmick. She's going to she's going to be the attack dog the way Christie was and you know for against Hillary. She is very outspoken about Trump. So that's going to be her role. I wish she would do let her out. Let her out. <laughs> <laughs> the theme is united together. And uh, Michelle Obama is also speaking. And Bernie. She should just rip off Melania's speech. <laughs> wow, this is a star-studded one. She Michelle should... Well, it's going to be a star stud at week. Obama is actually going to speak. What day is he speaking? Do you know? Wednesday. Now, here's the thing. Obama was probably the greatest public speaker of his generation. Uh, then he got a series. The series got renewed. And he hasn't <laughs> really been back to the stage since. <laughs> but he is, you know, he's Dave Chappelle. I mean, he could just walk out and rock a room. And people forget about it because it's almost eight years ago. But people swooned. Yeah. And this is kind of what ago. he does best. Well, he used to do best. Who knows if he can still do it? This is his chance. He should come out in leather like Elvis in 68. <laughs> and just this should be the comeback special. I hope uh, Michelle Obama's speechwriter like wrote some pretty good jokes. Dude, if she was fucking, if she was smart, she'd come out dressed like Melania. And she goes, look, it's going to end up there anyway. Maybe do a funny accent. Um, hopefully Leslie Jones will be there, too. Oh, my she God, seems please. To be, she seems to be the hot hand now, the controversial hot hand. She's where Amy Schumer was. Last year, the year before that, the girl from Girls, I never can remember her name. Lena Dunham. Thank you, Chris. Lena Dunham, where it's that, like, I'm doing great, and I'm fighting with everyone at the same time. (laughs) You're Uh, never going to stop talking about me. Never stop. You don't have to say good stuff. Just keep talking the whole time. Uh, So we'll be heading to Montreal later this week. You guys had a big uh, weekend. At the Guns N' Roses show. GNR. Uh, double date it to it? Yeah, well, uh, I brought my date. I was alone. St- I was a stag. You went stag. Yeah. What it's happened? weird. I've- trouble in paradise? Oh, no, no. Why, how could there, if it's paradise, how could there be trouble in it? <laughs> yes, that's where the phrase <laughs> trouble in paradise comes from. Adam and Eve had trouble in paradise. That's the fucking gimmick. <laughs> That's why it's so shocking. So we use the phrase <laughs> trouble in paradise. So you showed up uh, third wheel. Yeah, I was third wheel in it. Yeah. Uh, but uh, Hard Rock sent you guys up. Yes. Oh, you God. watched the Guns N' Roses somewhat of a reunion. Three out of five. Sixty percent of a reunion. A good sixty percent, which I think is enough to tip the scales to call it a reunion. <laughs> Officially a reunion. Uh, but it was a blast. And we hung out with Johnny. Johnny Gogo was there. It was great. Uh, and you guys enjoyed the show or no? It was, it was a blast. It was Axel Rose worked his ass off. I mean, worked his ass off. He never stopped. It was so eight much. Eight costume fun. changes. 
Like Cher? Yeah, yes. he was constantly wearing different like, shirts and hats. The first time he did it, I was like, hmm, did he just spill something on his T-shirt? And during a guitar solo, he like threw on a new T-shirt. I was like, that's weird. I think eight is a big look. I think there was at least 15, like 15 different T-shirts and sometimes changing the flannel around the waist. Good, smart move. So it was like going to see a Beyonce concert as far as just costume. <laughs> right. And pyrotechnics, but the amount of fireworks was pretty ridiculous. It was great. It was really I, intense. I saw enough of it on Periscope. Now Periscope must be the worst to get this because it just the the sound sounded like just a wall of noise, and then the complete flashing of the fucking lights. You couldn't make out shit. Yeah, because I took pictures. Yeah, and when you're taking like against those big screens and they've got the big jumbotrons, I think you can never really capture the way it looks. Right. Because it's just completely well, you blown can't, out. You can't capture it with those kind of phones. Right. That's for sure. No. But I kept waiting for you to scope. Everybody else was scoping. I had shit service because of fucking Sprint. It, I'm, I'm just going to get rid of it. Well, you're get an Verizon. Verizon. They have the best service. I'm done with this bullshit. I thought the Verizon guy said Sprint is good now. He's just getting paid by them to say that. <laughs> Yeah, that's what they all do. <laughs> so what did they open with? What happened? Uh, let's see. Did they open with Mr. Brownstone? Mr. I think, Brownstone. I think they did. Either that or that was the second song. But they they played for three hours? Three hours. Three hours of straight Guns N' Roses. And it was like, it, I, it was above and beyond what I expected. Because I had never seen a show on this scale in my life. This is the biggest crowd I've ever been in. I've right. never seen, and I've never seen, you know, a football, like an NFL football game. So I, while I was on the way there, I was like, wait a second, how many people are going to be on this thing? And then I started to get like really overwhelmed. <laughs> and so I had to be like, I live in New York City. It's fine. Like I'm around. Just Nassau the crowd. idea of 85,000 people. Yeah, in one space. Plus you I guys like, are watching Ooh. from a suite. <laughs> I know, I mean, you're still... really away from the riffraff. But I, I, I felt like, I don't know, I felt like I was standing at the edge of the Coliseum or something. It was very intense. Yeah, well, it's a big rock show. It's a big classic rock show. It was. I've been to festivals with like 40,000, 50,000 people, but just that many and that was crazy. It was a crazy Well, the spectacle. difference between this and a festival, too, is you're there for the festival, but these people are Guns N' Roses fans since 1987. You know what I mean? Yes. And they've been waiting for this lineup since, what, 92 Probably. or something? <laughs> right. You know, 94 at the latest. So for this thing to happen, what this was the show that no one thought was going to happen. So people have been pumped. Was Dave there? I don't believe so. No, Dave wasn't there. That's weird. The biggest Guns N' Roses fan of all time. Oh, actually, you know what? Mr. Ronson was second. They opened with, it's a Weezer. <laughs> Can I tell you something? I don't think this is that different from what I saw him in 87. <laughs> it's the same exact songs that you want to hear. It's the first oh, it album. Was great. Yeah, it was, you heard everything. It was, it was amazing. It was so much fun. Lap and lap, He sounded great. He did. Knock, knock, knocking on all my covers. He's doing it. I have to say, you know, a lot of people, they were talking trash on Axel because he, you know, he, when he returned, he was not looking the same and right. people were very, but I will say that he gave 150%. He, I think, I think he sounded great. Mm hmm. And I also think he looks so much more fit than when he first started. Like, I think this tour is just like, he, he looks like he's running the entire time from one side of the stage to the other. He's getting good cardio in. Well, that's why people go to a show. They like to see a lot of running around. <laughs> Do a lot of laps around yeah. the stage. Uh, that's always Jagger's thing where they have this massive stage and then a thing that goes out. And like, sometimes you look over and you're like, well, he's a hundred yards away from Keith. This isn't what I was looking for in a show. And when I'm saying 100 yards, I'm not kidding. A 100 fucking yards away. And you're like, um, I think you guys ought to just fucking tighten up the band again. <laughs> Get everybody back together. Um, but I think Sweet Child, for me, I thought Sweet Child of Mine was like the song of the night. Like yeah, it just you fucking and every crushed. other human. <laughs> no, because I think, what did you think the best one was? I thought the best performed song was Live and Let Die. I thought he sounded the best on that. You know uh, what's weird is one time I saw McCartney, I thought that was his best song of the night. And I don't even like that song. I don't think it's a fucking great song. But there's something, that is a real stadium mm -hmm. song. Because there's yes. explosions yeah, and shit. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. 
All right, so you guys went to a real big, a real rock old show. school <laughs> classic rock show. Yep. And loved it. And loved it. And I was I was shocked that I loved it. And everyone there was like, what do you mean you haven't seen a show in, in like a big stadium like this? And I was like, I don't think I have. I mean, like the closest is Madison Square Garden. That's like half of the amount of people. Yeah. That's half. And to me, that was huge. Oh, yeah, because you came up in an age where it was clubs. Club. I mostly saw. Yeah. I never saw for years any show smaller than a Madison Square Garden type show. Yeah. Um, because that's what that's the way rock was when I was younger. Everything was, you know, the fucking arena rock. And then the whole big thing was, wait, you can go see a fucking punk rock show in a smaller right fucking venue <laughs> this like, is insane it's only like a hundred people <laughs> in here <laughs> i'm eight feet away from a stage i'm comfortable <laughs> um but yeah that's the way rock shows were when i was a kid and everybody would be wearing the fucking t-shirt the following day and if you weren't you were like some kind of a fucking nerd loser yeah and that then and these shows would happen i'd say once every two weeks <laughs> month at the fucking least you know what i mean where it would be like a big act coming to town that right. everybody went bad shit for uh there's johnny hey johnny johnny baddington hey buddy what's happening uh, gail that was the talk of the whole the talk of the town was that you'd never been to a <laughs> concert that big it was crazy yeah the, the whole town every, was talking about yeah, the whole it. town the whole, the whole town and by everybody. town he means the bugs but they were yeah. like what are you talking about because this is all like they were like this is something i grew up on these kind of right side and then, shows and then i had i had her convinced that every concert like this you have to sit in one of these boxes and there's always fried mozzarella and <laughs> chicken fingers I was like this is great were you guys enjoying hard rock food or was that no the, this was listen this was all johnny gogo i was just there as a i was a conduit and an enjoyer of the concert this was all johnny gogo johnny and his Go -Go, people yeah hooked it up well, how, who's his people i thought he was you no, well, he's there. They have their own firm. It's their own PR firm. That oh, so he doesn't up. work for Hard Rock? <clears throat> no, no, he works with, but not f and ah, for, this but is not. All news he has to his me. Own. Yeah, yeah, he has his own. His he is a like the number three guy at a firm that has like four hundred people. He's a big time. Johnny Gogo's big time in the PR world. Yeah, I know, but I want to hang out with the other two guys. Those are the guys. <laughs> Actually, the guy, the number one guy, is is almost as cool as Johnny Gogo. He's he's probably actually a little maybe a little more fun. So you but guys yeah, just was, had a you guys just had a blast on that. We had so much fun. I met Johnny's <laughs> wife, and she is she's great. She is the best. Yeah. I just adored her. Yeah, she's great. It was definitely fun, and uh, I did. I didn't warn Killer Pepper that I really am good at the Irish goodbye. <laughs> Oh, you just blew yeah. out of there? Oh, I turned we... around. I think it was like, <laughs> like turned around during November rain to be like, yeah, Johnny. I'm like, where did Johnny go? Oh, my God. <laughs> no, we, we saw the beginning of, of Live and Let Die. We saw November rain we saw, and then partway through November, November rain. My wife and I do this pretty much at every show. We lasted a lot longer than normal. We just looked at each other, nodded, and then ducked. <laughs> that was it. We were like, <laughs> Maybe it was like knocking on heaven's door. I like, turned around to sing with them. And then I was like, what the? Where did they go? You missed Paradise and then City. Jo Johnny Johnny Gogo just goes, they're gone. They're gone. <laughs> I had to say goodbye to the host, of course. But <laughs> I think the highlight for me was catching Pokemon on the stage, but that's a whole nother. <laughs> I had to get a top on my shoulder and I turn around and he's got a Zubat flying over the stage. No. <laughs> Johnny's most, the best part of the night was being the only person on the turnpike. <laughs> yeah! yeah. <laughs> Great. Great. It was fun. We were walking out, and there was, there was like a handful of other people, but most of them were really drunk and being escorted by the police. <laughs> there was an es there was uh, thirty five people arrested Saturday night by the state police. I just saw a little article for and that's really raging. a low percentage. Yeah, I, can I mean you're looking seventy five, eighty thousand people, and yeah. they did two nights. Yeah, like that. they did two nights. Yeah, I can't believe that. Yeah. Last night was the same identical set list and uh, a little bit lighter on the second night in most shows. But uh, it was from what I had a couple of friends who went last night and they said it was pretty amazing. Um, and it, it, you could really feel, I don't know if you guys noticed it, but at no point were any of like the three main guys ever really near each other. And I think that's more purposefully because I really just don't think that they like him. I think that Slash is like the the guy that, you know, 
they don't like. And it's like you'd see, like he'd try to run next to him and, and Slash would just run away the other direction. <laughs> okay. I don't great. fucking need this shit. I just, yeah. You I, took the name of the band when I was high. <laughs> <laughs> I think fucking Slash sold the name Guns N' Roses for two fucking bindles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, luckily the stage was massive enough that they never oh. really had to be that close to each other. They were yeah, like the, off in their own little sections. The stage was, and it was like, we couldn't see it from our perspective because we were kind of side stage, but it was super deep. Like there was stairs that went all the way up behind the drums. So if you needed to get like 70 yards away, like so 150 feet from the, you're, the guy you don't like, you could have easily gone to one side of the stage. And if that's not far enough, you can go up and above him and just stand behind him. Well, yeah. definitely you could feel it there. But this is what happens with most bands. It's like uh, when the fucking Who were traveling, they came in on two different buses and they saw themselves for the first time that day on stage <laughs> every show. And then they left that's, their different episodes and never saw each other the, again. The Eagles, the same thing. The yeah. Eagles are like that still. And when, so when we did Velvet Revolver here years and years ago, we had to have one dressing room for Slash one dressing room for Scott Weiland, and then everyone else together because those two didn't get along remotely close to the point to the point where there was may have been some sort of a scuffle between their wives right outside my office. Oh yeah, I remember that oh, yeah. story. But yep. I remember that show and everybody was standing there going, That's not Scott Weiland. That's how much his look had changed. Yeah. I mean he came out and was like razor thin in some yep. weird costume, and the people in the... They thought it wasn't him. Going, That's not him. <laughs> That's <laughs> not him. My, it's he, fucking him. Yeah, he was here for that, and then he was here for Camp when Camp Freddy played, too, and he was even skinnier then, and that was when he, he asked me, he's like, hey, do you have a like a private area I can go to make a phone call? Right. Uh-huh. Who are you calling? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who's that calling? You know what? Pal? Put me on the phone, too, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I brought him into this little storage room that had all food in it and a phone. And I, I walked in, and it was when Lost was on. He goes, wow, this looks like that room from Lost with all the food in it. Like, all right, How was cool, it for okay. you getting in and out of the place traffic-wise, Gail? Crazy? We, no, we did okay getting in. It was like getting out was just a little difficult. Right. Like the parking lot was a little insane. But then once not we got me. out, it was not bad. Right. You know, It was just like I, getting out of a sea of people enough to like. You should have stayed and just keep having cheese sticks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we could have left with me. I mean, it was great. We were out of there. <laughs> yeah, anyone can get out quick if they miss half the show. Yeah, yeah. Ah, three songs. From, they were all covers anyway. I missed this. What did I miss? I missed the Seeker. You did the Seeker. You, oh, Paradise right. City. And Paradise City. Night yeah. Train. All right, so three. <laughs> All right. I was just redone Welcome to the Jungle anyway. <laughs> they did really early. That was too. early. That was like fourth or fifth. I think it was like Chinese democracy then into Welcome to the Jungle. I think that's so funny that he's doing the kind of solo Axel yeah. songs with those guys and they're not pissed about it, you know? <laughs> it's they not did, uh, I think they did eight songs from... Was it eight? They did eight songs from Appetite from Dest- for Destruction. <laughs> they should. <laughs> and then they did six. Then they, I like the second. The second most is six cover songs. Yeah, I mean then, they're not a band who's put out a lot of fucking songs. Well, yeah, because we had heard uh, my boyfriend had heard from his friend who saw them in Philly, and he's like, "Dude, they play for like four hours." We're like, "What did they play for four hours?" <laughs> like, <laughs> I enjoyed Lenny Kravitz did a really nice job opening up too. He did like an hour. I thought he was going to do like five or six songs, and he he cranked it out. Yeah, <laughs> sexy. Man. And then I'm a little upset that next the next opening band for in the next tour I think starting tomorrow is the Cult, which would have been I, I would love oh, to have man. seen the Cult more than Lenny Kravitz. <laughs> I've seen Lenny before. <laughs> <laughs> That's the sexy cult would be son fun. of a bitch. Did his dick pop out this time, or did he keep it in the fucking trousers? No, Pepper was hoping it was. Like, come on, please. I was trying to use mind powers. Uh, Pepper, I can't believe your chick missed this. Yeah, yeah. it's now, really how'd you sad. get there, train? Um, split an Uber. We split an Uber. Oh, you guys Ubered it the we whole Ubered way. It. Yeah. yeah. So you called an Uber to come home right from there? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. What'd that cost? It wasn't bad. It was like it was like forty coming in and maybe like fifty because of the surcharge coming back. It's not bad at yeah. all. And we we're Great. splitting it, so it was like yeah, it was not a big deal. Rather than take two trains, they were had to transfer, and the line to get on the train was oh, of course, bananas. Yeah, it of was course. sick. 
Then you go back with all those people and they've been fucking in the yeah. heat. <laughs> they're all that screaming. Time and they're fucking Chase screaming. them down! Turn to Paradise City! <laughs> Please stop leaning on me. <laughs> it, was, it was so hot. So, so, so hot. <laughs> well, if everybody noticed all the foliage up here <laughs> and noticed that there's some tigers running around, <laughs> I just want to say one more thing to you. <laughs> Welcome to the jungle, motherfucker. Yes. That's a song we'll be doing a little later. What? <laughs> Come on. And when you really? hear it, you're going to die. But not now. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit later. Here's a new song Slash and I have been working on. What? Wow! This one's dedicated to Hillary Clinton. <laughs> and it's called Lock Her Up. I used up. to love her. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you guys had the big rock experience. Yeah, it was so much fun. It was a great. blast. Well, <clears throat> hopefully next you'll be going to Tears for Fears. You know, keep <laughs> this thing going. Please. I would love it. Be, the sped up a big of a stadium show. The sped up version of Mad World. <laughs> All around it, places. Do it slow, <laughs> like that guy who does it slow. <laughs> All right, Jenny. Thank you, my friend. Oh, thanks, Benny. Thanks, Johnny. We had a blast. Well, thanks, Jenny Go Go. Yeah. Uh, thank, sure thank you, Johnny Go Go. Thank you. Thank you, Johnny Go Go. It's so easy. <laughs> it's easy peasy. <laughs> it's easy peasy. <laughs> it's easy peasy. <laughs> <laughs> I told you guys the first time I saw that fucking band, I'd never even heard of them. <laughs> and when they were fucking done, we were all like, Guns N' Roses is the greatest fucking thing that ever happened. <laughs> we're like, what's that song called? Bungle, Bungle, Jungle? <laughs> that one. Yeah, Slash was so killer. He's just like, he's just the most like chill, like just puts forth no energy. And then you're just looking at his fingers. You're like, what the fuck? No. Oh. I was like, what is his ethnic background? Nobody He's can figure so it out. Ambiguous. And parts are known. <laughs> Wait a minute, what is this word? <laughs> ambiguous? Is that for is that for like you don't know what an ambiguous race? Mm, yeah. I love it. i be using that all the time. Um <laughs> uh, are you a comic book guy, Vito? Uh I, I used to be more of one, but not really anymore. I like the movies. I saw finally saw the Superman versus Batman versus Wonder Woman. Yeah. And I spent the entire time going, how do children watch this and follow it? I it watched was it this weekend as well. fucking madness. It's so insane. And I felt, I felt like a little kid because I just kept turning and being like, well, now what's happening? Is Who's this a this? dream? Now what is this? How many people just died in that explosion? There's explosions where you just like, well, thousands just died in this. And then he's going to crash yeah, into this other building. But one of them isn't Superman. So no one cares. That was fucking insanely it's, stupid. It's so crazy. You had already spoiled the reason that Batman. I think it was you who spoiled for yeah. me why Batman and because I told you to because I was like, there, if I watch this movie, it's not going to be a big deal. And it's even dumber than like the way you describe. It's so. What dumb. did you just say? What name? <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? Holy shit! <laughs> I'm not bullshitting you, but that's my mom's name too. It's no. Fucking why, nuts. Now, why is that the thing that makes it? Why not have it be, oh, you saved someone and I realized I am incapable of saving that person the way you just did. And I realized you're bad. It's not just like personal enough. your mom's name. It's that was so they bizarre. Did an odd coincidence to uh, <laughs> to fucking stop isn't it, killing each other. Isn't it an odd coincidence that you're both Wait. superheroes? Isn't that enough of a weird coincidence? Your mom, she's. Elderly, but still incredibly hot. <laughs> How could that be? <laughs> Wait, your mom is Cherry Valance? <laughs> it was so... Was I, it? All I thought of is, like, I have nieces and nephews that love the, you know, the action figures. Uh, and there's no fucking way that they had any idea that what was happening no, it in was, that movie. 
It was so confusing to me. And then, yeah, there was one part where you were saying, is that a dream? There was one part that felt like a 10 minute dream sequence. And I'm still not really sure if it was a dream. I guess it was. When he kills all those dudes in the desert. I guess that part. No, that part was real. That no, was no, that's that's real. All the people who got shot in the desert. Yeah, that yeah, real. that was real. Towards the beginning. No, there was other people got shot in the desert too. Like when he had that dream sequence, when like Superman, like had... I'm thinking about when Batman was wearing the long coat. Yeah, long he was like, yeah, coat. That, that was, was not a dream. That was a dream. No, he was he was imagining an alternate future. He was having a dream and imagining a fucked up alternate future. Right, now I'm fucking even more lost. When like fucking Superman goes down in that pit and he's oh, like that guy held is... up. Yeah, those guys. So that's you're a right. dream. Yeah, that's I, a dream sequence. Here was the weird thing that got to me. I thought only that part was a dream. I didn't know the full 15 minutes before that was a dream. <laughs> it was all fucking dream. Because they then, went back and forth with dreams all the time. And then who was the one who was just like, you were right about him? It was I'm was that supposed sure. to be Robin? or it looked? But he looked like he was wearing an Iron Man costume, so I was really confused. And at one point, I think Aquaman just stuck his head out behind a rock for a second. Yeah. yeah. That part, which is that fucking, like, what, two minutes long sequence, was supposed to set up Justice League. And it made no sense. It didn't explain anything. It was fucking terrible. And yeah. they weren't even weirded out that there was a Wonder Woman. Yeah. yeah they're like, is she with you? That was, the first, that was the first comic book laugh of the entire thing. <laughs> oh, God, that was fucking nuts. It, it was, was really insane. By the way, spoiler alert, everybody. Spoiler oh, yes. alert. <laughs> spoiler but if you alert. waited as long as I did, come yeah, to say it, like you deserve I said, to be spoiled. I let Chris spoil it for me because I knew I deserved it at that I point. wanted someone to be sitting next to me spoiling what was happening. <laughs> <laughs> this is what's happening right now. But there was no, there was no connected scenes whatsoever. That's why the whole thing felt like a dream. There was no like, now we're going to this point. Yeah. And they're doing two funerals at the same time. And the, we love and hate Superman. All right. When Holly Hunter, right. Okay. Turned around and saw the cat piss. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Who blew up that place? Was it no legs? Did the cat piss explode? No, I no, no. Think. That was the... Okay, so what's his name did it? Lex Luthor? Yeah, but he how? did it. I think he just planted it. But where was it? I think in, in the no, cat piss? I think in, in no legs. I think the cat piss was some sort of chemical or something. Did, now, did no, no legs know it was Stop coming? It. That was yeah, just... I think no legs knew, knew it was coming. I knew, uh, No legs did not have a problem with this. He wanted to do it, as far as I can remember. All right, hold on. Jesse in Jersey. Jesse. Hey, how are you? Hey. So um, in that weird dream sequence, I believe that the guy that uh, Gail thought might be Iron Man was the Flash. Oh. So I was completely lost. I didn't know that I saw the Flash. Did you, Chris? He was like, you were no. right about him. Wait, no, I don't. They oh, showed my... Cyborg, Flash, and Aquaman in a way that it go paving the road to set up for... Oh, uh, no, that's not what I meant. Fleet. There's like a point, a point where like there, it just looks like like light comes out and someone sticks his head out and he yeah, starts, and he says you were right about him. That that's supposed flash. to be the Flash. Yeah, that was very confusing. Yeah, it was. It was a you have to watch the extended cut, I believe. Oh really no way! You have to. <laughs> no Another fucking way! The madness. There's no way I could possibly watch an extended. I thought that was an extended cut. <laughs> that was two and a half hours. Great deal as it was. Of fortitude. Oh, they asked too much. Way too much. Um, Never been a DC guy. I, mean, I prefer the Marvel universe. That's that's confusing enough for me. Peace. Uh, Mike, what's up, buddy? Yeah, hey, man. I, it's pretty funny to me that the cult is opening for them now. I don't know if it was... Um, when you saw them in Florida in 87, I know in Halifax when they toured in 87, they were opening for the cult. And uh, I think everybody had the same response that you did, man. Everybody was just blown the fuck away when, when they showed up. I saw them uh, open for Motley Crue. Oh, that the, okay. That was that show. And Motley Crue had the spinning drums and all that, but it just felt like <laughs> everything had left. You know what I mean? Like everybody was just like. Fuck. Because they were like, uh, they were young and they were like a real rock and roll band that way. I mean, it was like seeing the fucking Stones in 66 or something. Yeah. You know, like everybody was of that mindset of this is exactly what we want a rock and roll band to sound like, act like, 
You know what I mean? They didn't have any of the shit that you're talking about. They didn't have any extra anything. Right. They just fucking, just fucking came out and played real rock and roll. Axel just wore one t-shirt. It's just the one <laughs> t-shirt. Uh, that weird side to side fucking hockey dance that he had going. I basically did that for three hours. Yeah. <laughs> nobody, nobody had seen that before. Such a crazy like, dance. Like, what do we do now? Slide side to side. He did some really great, like, uh, some really great, like, wrestler type, like, mugging. Like, he was making a lot of big faces, like, after songs, like. <laughs> like right. really doing some crazy mugging that was everyone was popping for. Crazy to watch. <laughs> he would just do crazy eyes, like shifting crazy <laughs> eyes. It was great. Yeah, th- that dance is. Uh, he's still doing like, it. Yeah, he's still he's still rocking it. There are quite Hold a few up. people that says Chris Stanley's girlfriend was always made up. Mm-mm. Yeah, Real person. I'm going to be honest. I really thought this was going to be the time that I was. I thought this was the exact type of scenario that I was going to meet her finally. No. Nope. I'll tell you something else about that movie. Did that chick seem even slightly like Lois Lane to you? No. She, she did not, not have the Lois Lane vibe. She didn't have the Lois Lane look, attitude. Vibe, yeah, nothing. She didn't seem like she was a reporter. And she kept calling Superman Clark, which was driving me nuts. I'm like, dude, fucking TMZ is out there. You got to be careful with this. <laughs> I thought it was where they killed off Jimmy Olsen, like, fucking really quickly. And then Jimmy Olsen was in the CIA at the very beginning of the movie. I feel like I missed that, too. That, yeah, that was Jimmy Olsen, the dude that got shot that was with Lois. The guy who was like the fucking... Uh, I did not like know that that scene. was Jimmy Olsen. That was Jimmy Olsen. He was not a boy reporter. No. He was a seasoned CIA guy. <laughs> so Jimmy Olsen was always in the CIA, then, according to their... According to this movie, universe. yeah. DC sucks. And the Just- DC and DNC. And the Justice League trailer came out, and that just looks terrible. It just Ben Affleck is doing the guy named Gravel Voice, and there's just no need to do the Gravel Voice. Don't do it, because it sounds like shit. They that's all the, do it, though. That's the least of their problems with this. Yeah. Thing. It's really writing he did and a directing. Little, he did a little of the Gravel Voice. Because I know people time. complained about Superman. I'm like, that's fucking far. You know, yeah. what is anyone supposed to do with the Superman character? Or when Lex Luthor got fucking shaved, we were supposed to care. And Lex Luthor's acting like the Joker for some reason. <laughs> yeah, that was a little bit strange, right? Like I, A little bit. I just kept thinking, like, man, he's in kind of a different movie. Like, he's playing, like, a, a, bat, a dark Batman-type villain, very Joker-esque. But nothing else in this movie feels like that. See, so here's... He's a crazy guy, like that kind of right. stuff. He's acting like Axel. Here's some cat piss for you. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. The bell can't be unrung. Home skillet. And now no legs is going to blow up on that flap. Why are you talking like that? He is acting strange. Now, when I went to visit my mom's shitty grave and all the weird <laughs> blood oil came out, that was a dream sequence, right? It's your brain, isn't it? Let's get a giant Oscar winning actor to play my uh, valet and then have him in like three scenes. <laughs> <laughs> you think like those guys just look over and go, money, right? Gotta have money. I mean, what makes the world go round, unfortunately? Yeah. I wish it didn't. I wish we could just. I know. I wish. I, I wish I was back doing summer stock. Yeah. I wish I didn't need a pull that ran through my entire house. <laughs> But I do. Gotta have it. <laughs> it's not a requirement. Can't go back now. Yeah, it is. Once you've had it once. Can't go back. It's like once you've had turn down service, every time you don't get it, you feel like your life is shit. This isn't what I've gotten used to. I'm going to be there one night, so I need a suite of rooms. <laughs> Because I had that before, <laughs> facing an ocean somehow. <laughs> Have you seen the new Suicide Squad trailers? Ugh. How can I? They, <laughs> it went from it went from something that looked interesting to like a weird, like zany comedy. It looks like, and they gave away the biggest surprise in the movie in the new trailer. What's that? Batman's in the trailer. They had the Batmobile in like the four of the first trailers. Yeah, they but Batman's in the trailer now, like actually Batman. <laughs> Well, then who would have been driving the Batmobile in the other chair? Some other guy. 
I've seen it drive around by like remote control. <laughs> Could have been just a drone. It's really me in this. <laughs> awesome. How do you like them apples? <laughs> just like movies are fucking gone. They're just, they don't exist anymore. Well, it, it's really weird because, like, there was the Comic Con this weekend and all these trailers came out for, and it's just nothing but fucking superhero movies and superhero TV shows. Well, what would you expect to see at Comic Con? What do you think they're going to fucking show? <laughs> Masterpiece Theater? <laughs> Why would you be shocked? That's what they show at Comic Con. There should be an anti Comic Con con. I guess that would like be a, a film festival. A, adult <laughs> con? <laughs> <laughs> but that's the weird thing. How could a kid go to that movie and and fucking be able to follow it? It's not no, possible. I was so confused the entire time. And I, I've, I, it, it was a lot more not, because I didn't see the first Superman, whatever that was, Superman origin story, the one that led Man before of this. Steel. Yeah, Man of Steel. I didn't see that, so I, I didn't know that this was just going to be like a big. 9-11 porn thing like i did yeah, not straight like it was porn. just like well that was like thousands of people we're not even going to address what happens after they, that they should have shown this thing right after trump's fucking speech the other night because that's the darkness on the edge of town that he's talking about <laughs> so fucking funny though so funny it's so funny that somebody can make a movie without a single transition shot you know, just things are happening for no reason. They don't talk to each other. No, there's no like real character development. Like at the end, like this, like he spends a lot of time with Lois. Nothing ha Like it's nothing changes between the no. two of them. No, nothing. It's just like it's <laughs> pretty much it. And uh, Batman at the end, when he's Bruce Wayne, he's saying to fake Wonder Woman. We've got to find the rest of your kind. No. What? What is my kind? Freaks? Is that where you're going with this? <laughs> he goes, there's going to be a lot of fighting. And she's like, uh, why? How do you know that? Just the feeling. Yeah. Like, could I'll we find maybe... a reason to get into a fucking fight. With <laughs> well, maybe we could, uh, we could just wait on reporting something like that. <laughs> it's got to be Batman versus Iron Man within fucking 10 years. You know, that they just keep going with this. But it would have been easy enough to, like, write in some reason that he thought that there was going to be some, like, war that's coming. Instead, oh, no. he's just like, oh, no, I just feel like it. You remember that weird monster that came out of nowhere? I mean, that was fucked up. <laughs> what do you think? That's the last one like it? Probably not. A shoehorn giant monster didn't make any sense putting that in the movie. None. None. I think, I think they put the fucking monster in just to have uh, Wonder Woman pop out at the end. That must have been the only thing. There could have been a million reasons to have her pop out. No one needed a fucking monster that could tear off its own skin. <laughs> it's fucking killing Superman and bringing him back before the movie ends. It's insane. I know you really spoiled it now. I mean, we didn't go that far. Listen, everyone, that's what happens. I mean, I, I was still crying from No Legs being dead. <laughs> you were really attached to No Legs. Well, No Legs was there with the cat piss, and we were really getting into the point I of know. we don't want this alien going around solving our problems. I never liked fucking Superman, even when I was a kid. I was like, that's too weird. Yeah, I wasn't a big fan of Superman. I definitely preferred Batman as a little kid to Superman. I kind of like funny Batman. I wish they would bring funny Batman back. Like punny? Yeah. With lots of puns, Batman? Yeah. Just punching instead of fucking exploding shit everywhere. <laughs> and they didn't even, they just show, like his genius just has shown the fact that he has more computers than anyone yeah. you've ever met. He's a hacker. But why do you need that many computers no matter what you're doing? <laughs> he needs two dozen screens in front of him at all times. <laughs> now I can really understand what's going on. <laughs> Alfred. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter who who's in that suit, people will show up. There's nothing there. There's no storytelling, nothing. Fucking crazy. Hey, we got to turn this uh, coolness down. Um, I'm going to do it. Because uh, that's Spencer Berger, because we haven't seen him since his birthday party. It's on the way. I hope he's had a good birthday weekend. Me too. Well, can you have a birthday weekend, or wouldn't it be a birth weekend? It'd be a birth end. Or, yeah. <laughs> 
Here comes Spencer. Great summer wear, God. too. Great shirt. Hi. Come on in, Spencer. Come on. First of all, great party you had the other day. Everybody was very, very excited about your lobster rolls. Well, thank you. I really appreciate that. It was you. It was all you, because you shared. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that. Was that right? Was it a good surprise? It was an it was an amazing surprise. Good. Now, I noticed, though, you're not a key lime person. You didn't like the key lime pie. Yeah. I mean, now you're making faces. That I was see. the only thing. I, I wasn't <laughs> a fan of key lime. <laughs> no, it's, like a, it's a good thing that we had the uh, cupcake uh, backup. But you never liked key lime, or you've never tried it? Um, I think I've tried it once before, and I wasn't really a fan of it, because I remember um, when we were talking about, you know, like fruits and vegetables of when yeah. kids sometimes don't eat don't eat um salads and stuff like that. I think that's what my taste buds were saying to me. You you you, you didn't eat a salad when you were a kid? Um, not really, no. Would you eat one now? Probably a little bit, yeah. What's your go-to food? Like go-to lunch in New York? Um, right now it would be Cafe Metro. Cafe Metro right downstairs. Nice. Yeah. Salad. What, what do you salad always choice. grab there? A salad place? Usually like some light pasta dishes. Mm. Try to be light yeah. a little bit. Cool. Nice. Yeah. Good. They yeah. do have nice pasta salads. I have had them. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, Chris uh, go, uh, always said to me, he goes, we need a heavy lunch. Yeah. yeah. What is it about you wanting a big, heavy lunch? I feel like that gives you all the energy you need for the rest of the day. I like never, a nice, giant burrito. I never see you with energy, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, you know, it peters out. energetic today. You're you know, right. I guess I've never said that Chris is really full of it today. He's just... You know, it's always sad, like, if you go to the zoo and the polar bears is passed out in the corner, you know? <laughs> That's Chris after the show. And I'm just like throwing peanuts, trying to get him away. You won't do it. No, he's, he's not in his natural habitat. He's tired. And we're, we're going, I thought he was supposed to have a mate. I guess she's working. <laughs> she's guys. working. Stop tapping at the glass. He doesn't wonder, like it. I'm wondering. You know what got crazy after we did those two shows on Friday? The crazy almost sailor singing of <laughs> piano <laughs> man oh, I got to sing us a song yeah, we, were all, we're, of... we were all going nuts for that <laughs> <laughs> I got a lot of tweets about that and people who listened on like on demand and replay <laughs> and for some reason that seemed really funny to me as us behaving that that in, that level of insanity and then having to hear it later <laughs> <We're jacked up. laughs> well remember well, that night the way people uh, sang it at that Bar the night that you went to the hospital. Don't remember. Oh. You don't remember Piano Man? Oh, man, nope. that was one of the highlights of the night. basically what we were doing the impression of. Yeah. I don't remember anything about that. It was pretty much that, except for everyone was just, like, piling on top of you, like, dog piling <laughs> and screaming with their yeah, hands. Yeah, we were all the sort end. of having a little fun, dancing a little bit. Yeah. 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 I mean, what we're the hell, having Chris? A good time. I, I couldn't, Chris. I don't remember. Oh, my goodness, Chris. <laughs> That's true. I'm sorry, I'm That's sorry true. Spencer. Chris, oh but that, don't even worry. We got, we got all all fired up about uh, Spencer's birthday. We were really excited. You know, it's not every day. You know, your buddy has a big birthday. Yeah, it's exciting. You're gonna be. I know you're a political junkie, Spencer. You're gonna be watching the Democratic uh, convention. Um, yeah, I will be watching it actually. Right. So every day this week, when you come in, give us a wrap up of what you thought. That'll be your thing to bring in us because you're your review. You're a political guy. You don't even vote, Vito. You've never registered. No, I want to avoid jury duty, so I don't register to vote. <laughs> Somebody oh. told me that that's also a myth, that you can still get jury duty without voting. Not if you don't have your license, which I also don't have. <laughs> oh, my goodness, me! Now I'm afraid I'm probably going to get called for jury duty. Is there a way to, like, appeal it or something? <laughs> well, here's what you say. I'm on a shock jock radio show, and we talk about everything, and they end up letting you off. Okay. You you know, say, there's, there's, I have to talk about it. It's my job. But they'll always ask if anyone's in media, and I'll be like, I'm in a lot of it. A lot of shows. So many media. A lot of And not board. just social. Because I think that's, um, I forget, I don't know whether it's, yeah, I think it's illegal to actually talk uh, about a jury that you're on. Yeah. Which is very weird. But then eventually you can... After yeah, eventually, as soon as the trial's over, right? Then you can write a book if you want uh -huh. to. Yeah. But why are the trials going on? Because I did that. I was uh, on the jury for the OJ trial, and really, yeah, I, I did was, not know that. And I actually said, they said, "Do you think he did it?" And I go, "Did you ever see this guy play football? There's no way he did it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he couldn't do it." 
pretty good. He's, yeah. He's such a good player. He's in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> what are we going to say next? Slinging Sammy Ball did something horrible? No, I don't think that's going to happen. Bullshit. <laughs> um, here is uh, Chris. Chris in Best Virginia. Hey, Ron. How y'all doing? Yeah. I heard I heard y'all talking about uh, the Colt and uh, open, or Guns N' Roses opening for the Colt. I saw him 27 years ago in New Orleans. It was the last show that uh, Guns N' Roses ever opened for anybody. They were playing for the Colt. That was in uh, September of uh, 97. And, and now we're gonna stand, this Sunday, they're uh, doing just the opposite. Now the Colts going to open for Guns N' Roses in New Orleans at the Super Bowl. And then he's going to yell, how do you guys like it? It's not so easy, is it? Getting the small <laughs> dressing room. It's so easy. Easy peasy. <laughs> <laughs> you're a Guns N' Roses fan at all? I know you like the classic rock. Um, I've heard of them, yeah. yeah. I've heard some songs. Who's your your favorite? Is Billy Joel or is it Fleetwood Mac? Because I know you've been to both shows recently. Um. Pretty much Billy Joel. Good. Betsy, it's just Fleetwood Matt. Mm. A lesson or two. Keep it on the best coast, boys. Don't be bringing that shit around Madison Square Garden. Did you say Madison Square Garden? Or Yeah. Well, you saw Fleetwood Mac there, but last year. Yeah, I saw them. I guess that was that last year or two mm-hmm. years ago. And and we also saw the Dixie Chicks. I think I told you guys about it. it oh, yeah. Awesome. You said that was amazing. Yeah, that was a great concert. Well, one of the great Rock stars of all time is coming in here in just a few moments. Ronnie Spector. Now, Ronnie Spector, uh, it was all part of the Brill Building. If you look out that wo- um, window, or the other, you can see the Brill Building, and that was where all the early 60s music came from. Neil Diamond used to be a writer there, Carol King, and all great producers. Uh, but I think Be My Baby is watershed, watershed moment. Yeah. <laughs> It's it's probably one of Earth's greatest accomplishments. I think. The other really funny thing is, uh, Ronnie Spector went over. You talk about who opens for who. Beatles open for her. Stones open for her. Wow. But the funny thing is, when you go back and see those pictures, you see them as like nice guys in like jackets and little ties, and then after her, they all dress like Ronnie Spector. Yeah. Wow. Everybody. The hair, oh the yeah. like fashion, yeah. So you'll be greeting her in just a couple moments. Oh, that'll be exciting. Now, uh, Chris, what's your favorite Scorsese of all time? Is it still Mean Streets? My favorite Scorsese, Goodfellas. Mean Streets. So in the beginning <laughs> of Mean Streets, Be My Baby. Mm-hmm. One of the greatest openings of all time. Yeah. Not that Goodfellas isn't good, Chris. I'm glad oh, that you good. went into it. Later, when I have Eric Clapton in, I'll bring that up to you. Gotcha. But right now, let's set up Ronnie Spector, you know? Um, is your girlfriend a Ronnie Spector fan? Yes, she is. Really? Mm-hmm. So she can buy today? No, her? she's just working. On that Long seems Island. weird, because... What, why Long Island? Tutoring. Kids need tutoring on Long Island. <laughs> what does she tutor people in? Uh, English, math. Those are two very different things. But she doesn't want to be a teacher, though, huh? No, just tutoring is a lot lot better money in tutoring. I had no idea this. What? Yeah. Yeah. I thought I thought tutoring is like a little less, though, because teachers, they get paid for they get paid from taxes. Correct. Yes. That's what I thought. I feel like it would be more. And tutors don't get paid from taxes. No, I don't believe they get paid from taxes. No, tutors don't get paid from taxes. I'm saying teachers, like regular school teachers, they get paid from taxes. And I feel like teachers would get paid a little more than tutors. I would say a lot more. I mean, a tutor just sitting there with one kid. Yeah, exactly. Um, They just charge you like five hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah. But if you got thirty kids, suddenly that's fifteen hundred. Yeah, that. Okay. What, What was your favorite year of school, Spencer? What year? My favorite year of school. Um, I would say maybe like. Seventh or eighth grade, I think. Seventh and eighth for you. Yeah. yeah, what about you? Oh my God. I would have to say second, fourth. Yeah. Those were good. Seventh, eighth, not so much. Not so much. What about for you, Chris? I don't know. Latter end of high school. Latter end. See, junior, senior year. That was yeah, That was also another great year, too. For me, it was the year before I started, <laughs> and then I loved the year after school. Right. That that, was great. That's a pretty good year. Yeah. Because I, what I took, it was a, me decade because <laughs> <laughs> i enjoy sleeping late watching tv <laughs> not being part of this whole education <laughs> look who it is it's johnny gogo hey, johnny gogo 
Hey, what's up, buddies? Hey, Johnny. Hey, Johnny. I got a good Chris Stanley energy story for you. Love to hear it. So my wife says to me, we're in the suite. She looks out. She's like, Chris, Chris left. He's like, Irish, goodbye. I'm like, oh, man, that sucks. And she's like, yeah, he's not there. And there's no one sitting behind Chris. He's so slumped down in his chair. <laughs> 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 that you literally couldn't see him. Wow! Oh, why everybody else is going crazy? <laughs> Must have been during a ballad. No, everyone's going crazy. Gail's dancing like she's in the front row at CBGBs. <laughs> her her boyfriend or fiance is like sitting stone cold, getting yelled at by people next door. Like, why are you not dead? <laughs> people are yelling at yeah, him. Yeah, he hopped up a couple times, but he got in trouble for not getting up during. What was it? Oh, night train. And there was yeah, like, like these night dude... train. It's night train. And then Why there's dude dead? bros next yeah. to us who yelled at him. And then I had to be like, we don't need to get real Philly right now. Like, <laughs> we're in the box, all right? <laughs> like, we got to keep it cool. <laughs> Just something's coming out of he his was pocket like ready, quickly. He was ready to go. And I was yeah. like, not tonight. We can't do this. I was like, yeah, if you do wife, this, then I, I have to follow you. My wife's like, because the guy that was yelling at your boyfriend sat down for the next song, and she's like, I'm going to go say, he's like, why aren't you up now? And I was like, what do you want to get me punched in the face for? Like, you guys are at a concert. I had the same idea. People arrested. Johnny, you, I want to pick this up with you, but the lovely Ronnie Spector is ready to walk in right now. All right. Tell uh, her I loved her on Eddie Money. But let's, uh, let's bring this up uh, later. Thanks so much, Johnny. All right. Johnny. Uh, the great uh, Ronnie Spector, she's promoting some uh, dates that she's working, Chris? Yeah, she's performing this Wednesday, July 27th at Provincetown Town Hall in Provincetown, Massachusetts. Then uh, Sunday, July 31st, she'll be at the Bethel Woods Center for the Arts in Bethel, New York. And Monday, August 1st, she'll be at City Winery in New York City. You go to RonnieSpector.com for all her dates. Wow. Rock and roll royalty. And with us, the great <laughs> Ronnie Spector. She's, Hi, Ron. She's performing this Wednesday, July 27th at Provincetown in uh, Town Hall, Provincetown, Massachusetts. Uh, Sunday, July 3rd. 31st at Bethel Woods Center in Bethel, New York. Uh, and then she's performing August 1st at City Winery in New York City. Go to RonnieSpector.com for tickets and check out her new album, English Heart. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you're a huge fan of uh, English Heart. <laughs> yes, it's so great. Oh, it's so cool. You. And it's a, it's such a, it's such a cool thing to hear you do that, uh, genre, which is a genre that I love. Very from much as well, All exactly. Yeah. From the sixties, uh, but from England, yes, <laughs> exactly that British invasion sound. And we were just discussing before you got here how much an impact you had on those bands when you went over I there. No, it was like, well, the Beatles hadn't been in America yet. Yeah. You know, and we go over there, and all they wanted to know was all about American artists, James Brown, Chuck Jack, Chuck Jackson, Chuck mm. Berry, yeah. Little Richard, and I said, I don't know these guys. <laughs> <laughs> from New York they're from yeah. the South uh, yeah I don't know them you yeah. know so then they would ask me well did you do shows with them and what were the dances so I used to teach the Beatles the jerk and the, the monkey and the twist and they wanted to know everything about America they didn't have a clue three weeks later when we came back, they came over to America with the girls waiting at the airport. Yeah. They were, like, scared. When they got to the hotel, as a matter of fact, the Beatles called me. They had my own phone number. Ronnie John says, well, what are we going to do? We're prisoners up here. <laughs> you know what I did? I took them to Harlem <laughs> to a barbecue stand. <laughs> and they had the best time. Nobody looked at them. Nobody came over for their <laughs> autograph, which is what they wanted. Yeah. You know, and they... I, they most people thought they were a bunch of Spanish dorks, you know, with the long hair. Because in my neighborhood, you didn't get a haircut once a week. You know, yeah. parents couldn't afford it, so all the Spanish dudes would wear their hair long. So all the other people just thought they were a couple of Spanish dorks <laughs> from Spanish Harlem, you know. And it, and it was they loved it. They got a chance to look, listen to the jukebox and all the people they loved on the jukebox and eat in peace. So it was a great thing for them. They love that. That was really cool. That must have been an electric time. Like, every day must have been You electric. know what it was, Ron? It was the most magical time in rock and roll. It really was. M mending the Motown, the rhythm and blues, and then the British. It was like music, world of music. Yeah. And it was the greatest time of my life. Because I was over in England with the Ronettes in January of 64. 
they came in February. <laughs> so it was like we were the only Americans they knew <laughs> and liked. <clears throat> I know my sister was dating George Harrison, and we just had a great time. And then later, the Beatles wanted me on Apple Records. You know, that's mm-hmm. the only way they would take my film to produce some something they had to do, the Let It Be or whatever. And uh, I did a album. I mean, not an album because I couldn't get there. But I did a single with George Harrison. He produced it. And you know, try some, buy some. Then David Bowie did it, and then George did it with my voice and his voice talking over each other, singing yeah. over each other, each other. So I, I mean, I love England because they love me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, I can yeah. go over there, and the crowds are everywhere. In Paris, we just came from Paris. They were nuts over there. You still love uh, going out, just like when you were a kid, doing these oh, shows, yeah. or just as much fun. Just, Ron, yeah. I, I was telling Sandy, if I don't get up on stage, like, after two weeks, I'm like, oh, where's the stage? You know, that's my energy. They're my, my, my fans are my people. That's, yeah. that's the only time I have a good time. I don't like parties. I don't like clubs. Yeah. So I don't go to clubs and stuff. But when I get on stage and those crowds are out there, it's like, ooh, baby. Yeah. And it makes you really, people say you have so much energy up there. But it, the audience gives me their energy. Yeah. You know, and they feed me. And I almost pass out half the time because I'm like, <laughs> I'm like in shock. Yeah. Number one, that there's so many younger kids at my shows. Yeah. You know, 18 and up. And then, you, of course, I have 50 and 60 and 70 years right. old, too. But to see those young kids and to see them have the beehive hair and the Ronettes used to have and all that, it's like mind-blowing. And I don't believe I'm still around having people admire me like this yeah. you know in my voice and stuff and it's just like I, when I was over in London Amy Winehouse's mother and I are very close and uh, we went out to dinner uh, together at my hotel and she was saying Ronnie every time I see you on stage I think of my daughter you know and I'm saying I said what do you mean she said well, when you put your hand down here like that the little movements you make she." She wanted to be you. She studied you. Yeah, she studied me, and, I, and I'm, I'm just amazed. And I used to call her Mrs. Winehouse, and she <laughs> said, no, I'm Janice. You know, so we've been friends for like three years now. You know, our daughter, great. she's been gone like five years. I know, just uh, it doesn't like this week yeah, or something, like, right? Yeah. It's like amazing to me. Yeah. I'm thinking maybe two years. Yeah. But of course, I know, because I knew her. And it's been longer, but it still amazes me with that great talent. Yeah. Gone? Yeah. 27. I thought that happened in the 60s. Yeah. Jimi Hendrix is 27. All those people back then would yeah. stop. Janis Joplin, Janis Joplin, Jim Morrison. Right. Yeah. But you wouldn't think it the, these days because I would think the artists are more hip today right. than to do drugs and drink. I just, I don't know why I think that. I'm mm. stupid, but I, I maybe I'm in the wrong decade or something, but I just don't know. I don't understand if you're on stage, that is your party. All these people going to these places. Well, they, I know why they go. They go where the cameras are. Mm-hmm. So the cameras will catch them going in and out. And Who cares? That's bullshit. Yeah. You know, if you want to be private, you can be private. There's so many great rich places for all these rich kids to go that are in the rec- record business today. But they all want to be seen. It's all about publicity. You know, and that kind of, I don't like that in rock and roll. You know, I just think about that era, too, that here these little girls from Spanish Harlem, which is such a unique place, Mm -hmm. even to this day. Right. But there you are touring the world, taking that vibe. It had to be mind blowing because you're meeting people even in our country who are nothing like you. You know? Yeah. Well, I think it's because um, when the girl groups were going really strong. Yeah. I think the Ronettes were just not better. You know, they had the Supremes, the Cookies, the Crystals, the Chantels, right. you can go on forever. We were just different. Yeah. Because, of, you know, uh, I'm a half-breed, you know. Right. I don't know if that's the right word to say, but, you know, I am. <laughs> but my the mother's Ro- black the and Ronettes, Indian. The Ronettes sound completely sanded. Because that's, to me, to me, that was the greatest genre of music. The girl groups are, are my favorite. Mine too. But the, the, the Ronettes, to me, you stood out so magnificently. And I think for uh, there was something that was just a little bit more rock and roll, I think, about. Yeah, because we were like yeah. more... Most of the groups back then had a choreographer mm-hmm. and someone to groom them. I said, groom you? Don't you know how to groom? <laughs> so, you know, so we didn't have any of that. We never had a choreographer. 
We went in the back of my grandmother had this big house and pre-war buildings in New York. Yeah. And we would go downstairs in the lobby where the tile was. And you could hear that echo. I was like eight years old. That's when I knew I could sing. I had to take about nine cousins with me because we weren't allowed to go in the p- play park outside. Right. So we could go downstairs in my grandmother's building, pre-war, the ceilings were that high. And why do birds sing so gay? And then the girls were do up, do up. We, we just had the do ops going and everything. And it was, I knew I was going to be a singer and a star. Well, oh, not a star. <laughs> but I you knew I was gonna... you were going to go. And then immediately, who was it? Murray the K that uh, is the one that spotted you guys. Yes. It, was it a talent show or? Nope. Murray the K. We were at the at Peppermint Lounge in New York. Right. And that's when they hired us. Then they opened a new Peppermint Lounge in Miami. So they shipped us to Miami. So we went. We were on stage, and who's on in the audience? Murray the K. He comes backstage. He said, "Girls, I'd love to have you on my show." Too bad you live in Miami. I said, Murray, we live in New York. And stairs <laughs> home. What are you nuts? Yeah. You know, and that's when we started doing his radio show and, you know, then doing his uh, Brooklyn Fox shows, which had Marvin Gaye, uh, The Miracles, uh, The Shangri Laws, The Supremes. I mean, like 12 huge acts. So we were only, at that time, we were called. Murray the K's Beautiful Dancing Girls. Is that right? Yeah, we, we, we didn't have a hit record then. And we come up to Murray's, like I'm here with you, Ron. Yeah. And we go, ooh, it's so cold outside. <laughs> ooh, Murray. <laughs> and I would say, ooh, I can't, the water is so cold. And I can't even swim, but I would say little things like right. that. And so that's how we sort of got known. So when I was in high school, oh, she thinks she's cute because she's on the radio. I said, honey, you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> and then we got Be My Baby, you know, right. the number one record. So, it, yeah, I showed all those kids at school. They this, didn't like me. This is the movie that needs to be made, right? This is the movie. That's the era that would be perfect. I know. To do that. <laughs> I can't say anything, Ron. Is that right? <laughs> mm-hmm. I, but just the way, seriously, I can picture it so quickly when you're telling these stories. And <laughs> that was like the last era where, like I said... People from yep. Spanish Harlem were completely different from people from Brooklyn. Yeah, it was a whole you, thing. Yeah. yeah, everybody. So, and that's what was amazing that these English kids fell in love with this music over here, and then brought it back and kind of remade people look at rhythm and blues and blues yes, and stuff did. like that. Yeah, all those groups you have to remember: the Rolling Stones, the Beatles. They went to see all these black. Jazz guys. Right. You know, and that's where they got their, their tone. The Rolling yeah. Stones, they got all of that Muddy Waters, I guess. Right. People that I never knew. But that's who they listened to. Like, I listened to Frankie Lyman. That's that was your guy, right? Oh, that was it. I I, yeah. I don't know if he was a guy or a girl. Right. But when I heard, why do birds sing so gay? Yeah. <gasps> who is that? Who is that? Is it a guy? Is it a girl? My grandmother used to yell at me, Veronica, you're going <laughs> to go deaf if you don't get... Because I would get into the... Right to the speaker. You know, right. I wanted to hear every word this kid was singing. And as, from there on, I listened to him day and night. My sister would be in her room doing homework. I would be listening to Frankie. The teachers would call and say, Mrs. Bennett, Ronnie's not getting her homework in. You got to do something. And he said, she comes to class and all she knows are Frankie Lyman songs. <laughs> <laughs> and the, she said, the kids love her, but, you know, she's distracting the class with all the singing. So I was, I was that way from a very young age. And I still love the stage. I still love to sing. I love my new album, English Heart, because I could pick them all out myself. Yeah. The lyrics, the words, who I wanted to... You know, it's like the, the, I love um, How Can You Mend a Broken Heart by the Bee Gees. Bee Gees, uh, the uh, animals. The uh, Beatles. I, yeah. I, I, the Beatles are uh, Follow the Sun. Yeah. I just have all the, my favorite guys from that era and know, I, that I was friends with. And I have one out that's called uh, I Much Rather Be With the Girls. Keith Richards and Andrew Oldham wrote this song 50 years ago when they were touring with us. Wow. And I, they, I picked it up and I said, I love that, but I'm going to change it to I much rather be with the girls. Because when they were saying that 50 years, they much rather be with the boys. I said, hmm, what's going on here? <laughs> you know, what's happening here? You want to be with all the boys. <laughs> well, now I want to be with the girls because yeah. we have the girl power, right? <laughs> we do. We have the power now. And so I'm taking that power, my power back and just out there and doing my thing. I was in Paris. We were at the 
Was it Glastonbury? Glastonbury. Glastonbury wow. oh, Festival. In Scotland, yeah. Yeah, I got five stars. <laughs> and uh, that's a giant, giant, giant. festival. Uh, Adele was there. Yeah. Everybody was there. It was like so great, you know, and just to walk out there and there's like 50,000 people listening to you. And going crazy and stuff. It was, it was, it was. Maddening. I love it. Ronnie and Spec- Paris was great too. Ronnie Spector is in studio with us. She's performing this Wednesday, July twenty seventh, mm-hmm. at Province Town Hall in Province Town, Massachusetts, on uh, July thirty first at Bethel Woods Center for the Arts in Bethel, New York. And she's going to be here in New York City, August first at the City Winery. Go to RonnieSpector dot com for tickets and information. No, yeah, but- I hope to see you there, guys. Well, you know what? Uh, uh, to yes, point Ron. this out to people. People, this is one of the great rock and roll shows of yeah. all time this year. You. And you are looking <laughs> at one of the people who rock and roll was one way before her and another way after. after. And that's the amazing thing about <laughs> it. Now, you're going up and doing, you know, Bethel is where Woodstock was. That's I know. That, oh, I know. <laughs> is, is that that like amphitheater that you'll be doing yes. outside? Yes. It's a beautiful, beautiful Isn't venue. It? Yes. And you get up and watch. Where and I mean, you bring up Adele. It's a perfect example. This is where that kind of singing came from, it's, right? And that's uh, what I love about Adele. Yeah, she doesn't have choreographers and right. fifty dancers in back of her. And to me, it takes away from who the artist really is mm-hmm. because that's a choreographer teaching them stuff. When we were out, we didn't have anybody teaching us. We just got up there and shook and. So let's all do that together, that one step. And yeah. we made a rock and roll in home, and I think that's why the kids like it. She this really stuff. is kind of a throwback in a way that I think Amy Winehouse was a throwback as well. Like there's something there, it's just about her voice, and then she just has like this incredible power. Well, mm-hmm. when the Ronettes start to record, were you recording in New York, or did you go out to LA for that's that? That's the funniest thing because I rehearsed all my songs in New York. My producer lived in New York. And I was rehearsing Be My Baby in New York. Then I get a call. You've got to come to California to record this at Gold Star Studios. Wow. And I said, what? And my mother went with me to, this, uh, to the airport. And she said, honey, you're 18. I think you can do this now on your own. I really think my mother was afraid because it was like a five or six hour flight. And my mother only went to Miami on a little one and a half hour <laughs> flight. So I think she was really a frightened to go that long. But it was a breeze. I went right there. Phil picked me up at the at the airport. I went straight to Jack Nitchie's house. Wow. And he was the arranger for Be My Baby. I didn't even go to the studio. I didn't go to get well, my hotel room. Nothing. He took me straight to it. And Jack Nitchie was great. Jack Nitchie, the arranger. Oh, yeah, he's all amazing. My records. He was amazing. Yeah. I mean, they give Phil a lot of credit, but I went to Jack Nitchie's house off the plane right to his house to be sitting at the piano with his little son, little Jack, and Gracia, his wife. That was the first thing I saw in, in, in California. That's th- stunning. <laughs> if you ever watch the documentary, The Wrecking Crew, those uh, musicians yep. that they recorded with were the greatest musicians. Uh, yes. Palmer. So you are 18 years old. She's at the, uh, you know, uh, in New York City when that's happening. Yep. Then going out playing with these legends at 18 <laughs> and then going to England and the opening bands are the all the English invasion bands. Again, this is a movie and a movie <laughs> that if it was fiction, nobody would believe it. It's true. And especially if we get deeper, which we won't. Yeah. Uh, but I, I just loved everything about the recordings and stuff. Sure. When I got out there, um, they put you in a little booth, you know, to the lead singer. Yeah. And when Hal Blaine went into boom, 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 because my father was a drummer, too. He went boom to boom. And when I came in with the night we met, they all flipped. They all just dropped their music. They dropped their guitars. And the guys got up. They couldn't believe it because I did have a different voice. Yeah. And if you I, we, we, it plays in my show. I have a um, video in back of me. Dick Clark calls us Native Americans. This is a new sound. These are Native American girls. What Native <laughs> Americans? We were from Spanish Harlem. I mean, you know, and, yeah. and I say that in my show because it's amazing how many people thought we were so different from we weren't black, we weren't white, so we, we were Native Americans because we had the black hair and long hair. So I, I said, any, I, I'm, I'm everybody. Mm-hmm. I love being every race rather than being one race, right? Because we're all together in this whole world, right? Black, white, green, orange. We're, we're all together. 
So I don't understand some of it, you know? Well, the unifier is always music, and that's what you had at that that's time. Right. You know? And still have. Yeah. Because when people come to my show, they're happy. They right. leave happy. At least I'm giving them an hour and a half of happiness. Right. Because when you walk out, you see the Trump and Clinton. It's like crazy town now. Right. So I, I love what I do, and if I didn't sing, I would be miserable. Well, there's so much, <laughs> yeah, there's so much light in that music and there's so much light in your story and Thank people you. have a, a, a tendency to focus on the dark stuff but there's also so much beauty that made me keep going and yeah stuff. yeah uh i'm just so glad to see you uh out experiencing it too you know oh, i mean you wow. absolutely deserve it thank you uh one of the greatest uh <laughs> rock and roll stars of all time get the opportunity to make sure you go out and see Ronnie Spector. She's performing this Wednesday, July 27th at Provincetown Hall in Provincetown, Massachusetts. Sunday, July 31st at Bethel Wood Center of the Arts in Bethel, New York. Uh, and then Monday, August 1st in New York City uh, at the uh, City Winery. Uh, RonnieSpector.com for tickets and information. Absolutely go see her because she's incredible and check out her new album, English Heart. We'll see you Yay. next time, Ronnie. We love you. Darling. Bye, Ron. Bye. I love you all. The great Ronnie Spector, you got to make sure you go out and see her. Man, I got to tell you, I've, I've had her on the show for years. She's never been stronger than she is right now. Health wise, she's just energy wise, it's just great. I, you had her in, I think that would have been a couple years ago uh, before I had joined the show. And I, I can't even believe, because I, I was stunned to be in her presence then. Yeah. But she looks incredible. She just, I absolutely go see her. Yeah. Now, because yeah, this, she, is perfect. this is the right time for her. I'm definitely going to see her in August when she's in the city. City, city Winery? Yeah. That's a great, well, you know, we were talking about to go and see somebody in a venue where you're right there near her, too. But uh, mentally, spiritually, she's really, really strong yeah. right now. I just adore her. Man. I, adore I'm in her. awe of her. Like, I think that she's she's my all time favorite. Um. I would love to. Uh, I, w I would love to see that movie get made. Why is he Sanders speaking now? Isn't he going to speak tonight? He's yeah, he's scheduled to speak tonight. But why is he speaking now? I'm not sure where he is. Is this the show before the show? He's addressing the delegates ahead of the convention. Why? I guess he's going for the unity thing. Going to calm everyone down. Too late. <laughs> that fucking thing. I don't know, maybe we need a good revolution in this country. You know, everyone's so pissed off. Just go and go for it. You know, we'll get take it for, what was our last revolution? Four years? We can put up with four years of fighting in the street. If it yeah. brings everybody back together. Four years of bloodshed. Brother yeah. versus brother. Why not? Hmm. Shake it up a little. See what happens. Sometimes it's brother versus mother, which is... Uh, it's really weird when yeah, that happens. Yeah, that's strange. It seems like an unfair fight. <sighs> yeah, mothers are tough. <laughs> <laughs> I, some of the brothers are a little. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> like that's a problem. Oh, don't let me be misunderstood. I might even go up and see him Bethel outside. That would be great. Yeah. You know, summer's the outside show time, you know? It's like the outside venue time. Enjoy the heat. You know what I do? I pick up the grass tickets and I try to head down to the seats. Sure. Somebody <laughs> gets up to dance, I get in their fucking seat. I go, hey, dude. No one said you had to dance the night away. <laughs> Chris, were you dancing the whole time, or did dude bros have to yell at you, too? No dude bros yelled at me. Why don't you double? He, he was sitting the whole time. The but... What's that? Why don't you double date and go to the show? I don't know. I'll see. I'll see, see if she's free. Seems like she never is. She's very busy. Uh, Duff McKagan did bring up to say, hey, hello, punk rockers, at one point, and then the dude bros next to us screamed, hey, this isn't fucking CBGBs. <laughs> Which was really strange. Oh, they were awful. They, they were, were pretty they bad. They were bad people. They were bad. Oh, God. I, I was like, what? <laughs> like, why are you going to try to act like you're rock and roll when you're, like, rocking a popped polo collar with fucking khaki shorts? It's like, relax, dude. They didn't have <laughs> you're not in the on. fucking band. What, what were you guys at? Revenge of the Nerds next to the bad... <laughs> <laughs> the fucking, yeah, the bad frat is sitting there trying to bother everybody. <laughs> nerds. Nerds. Mm. Nerds. I'm a nerd. I'm sorry I had to cut Johnny Go Go short, but you I know. know what I mean? Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I think he understands that, though. He understands rock and roll. He's a rocker. He's a roller. 
It makes sense. I guess. You know, if he rocks and rolls. I didn't know. I know he rocked. I didn't know he rolled also. Mm-hmm. I thought that he worked for Hard Rock all this time. Yeah, I only just found that out what, uh, the other day when we went to the show. But I thought that they were in this with the same thing, but they just work alongside each other. Let's see. In unison. Um, you got anybody grabbing those phones or your Vito? You just like watching the show? Oh, uh, they're grabbing the phone. Al, what's up, buddy? Ronnie. Hey, we caught Ronnie Spector in February. I guess it was February. Bowie had just died. She did a little tribute to Bowie to open Aww. up. It was unbelievable. Uh, you're right. The energy she has. I mean, it was like six degrees outside, snow, ice, and she just melted everything. At one point, I yelled out, we love you, Ronnie. And she yelled back, I love you too, baby. So now I just randomly tell people that. <laughs> That's a smart <laughs> go, idea. How, yeah, how's it going? It's pretty damn good, that. Best voice in rock and roll lost me my wife because he was at a show. <laughs> Best money you could ever spend. All right. We, we got to go to this show. I'm definitely going. I'm just so happy how well she's doing. She was uh, just telling me how much, um, how nice she got along with Sandra Bernhard. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I would imagine. <laughs> Sandy digs that whole scene. Yeah. Sandy land. Oh, yeah. Uh, here is uh, Jeff. Jeff, what's up? Hey, Ryan. Love the show. I listen as often as I can. Me too. <laughs> hey, I lived in Tampa for a short while, and I was wondering if you had some good stories about, do you remember a place called the Rocket Club? Absolutely. The Rocket Club was a big place for 95YNF. Uh, yeah, it was funny. You'd go in there and you'd see if any of the metal, hair metal bands especially were in town, they'd be hanging out at the bar with their nine bandanas and scarves on just hanging out. It was really funny to see. That was uh, a uh, a big time for uh, hair farmers. Wherever you would go, it would be the uh, the high hair. Rocket Club was good. London Victory Club was a very, very big space from that. I'm trying to think of the place on the other side of the bridge. It might have been called Mr. T's or something T's and the fucking hair was so high. <laughs> In that place for men and women that you wouldn't believe it. Like everybody looked like they were in that bed. And then you'd find out that these guys who the women would just throw themselves at these guys. But then during the daytime, they would be like fucking just delivering sandwiches to some, you know, what I mean, like just some regular job just to make ends meet. But all the titty dancers after they were done would go to these kind of clubs. So they would come in. Crazy hair, makeup, and asses out, fucking titties out. That that era, I can see why some people are so nostalgic. As embarrassing as it was, it turned every fucking club in America into Diamond Girls. You know what I mean? Like, you were just, no matter where you went, it was crazy that way. All right, we got to take a break here. It's the, the Bennington Show. Are we going to announce another... Um, Unmasked today, Chris? Or yeah. No, we are? I believe so, yeah. I'm going to double check. I believe so. I'm going to double check. All right. Well, that's probably... If we're going to double check, we probably shouldn't do it. But this is going to be a great one, your chance to come in to uh, hang out with us. A very big star. A man that I consider one of the best interviews of all time. We'll announce that as soon as we come back. This is the Bennington Show. We're going to come back with uh, Ronnie Spector dropped Jack Nietzsche's name. Uh, just play that song so people can pick it up. For this is the guy who arranged those songs for her. He was, uh, you know, a genius in, in the early '60s in the studio. So she's 18 years old. Gets off the plane from Spanish Harlem in New York into LA, and immediately is taken to this dude's house. And he starts to arrange that. That was very interesting hearing her say that. You know, she gives a lot of credit to him because everybody always says, you know, that Phil was the, the genius. We don't talk about Phil. <laughs> Every time she comes in, she's like, no, Phil. And then she brings up the name Phil. I know. <laughs> Every <laughs> time I've ever had her on, probably had her on five times. Every time. No, we don't want to talk about Phil. Especially in the beginning, she was very, because she, you know. Yeah. Her life was uh, made incredibly difficult by Phil. And down to the point where, you know. She wasn't even aware how many people loved her, you know, but 
kind of a nice story that here at the end, they were showing me, uh, uh, Billy Gibbons came out and played with her, uh, in, uh, in Scotland, which is just crazy. You know, I'm just so happy for her. She's such a nice person. She's the best. And still Stone Cold sexy. She's, she's so, so very sexy. And she and was her, sexy at 18 and she's sexy now. It's crazy. And her talking about, you know, Amy, when I first saw Amy Winehouse, I think I had actually seen a picture. People were like talking about her and saw a picture of her. And uh, before I'd ever heard her music and I just thought, well, she's like a kindred spirit. I was like, she's obviously into the same stuff I am. She had, you know, the eyeliner and the big beehive. Right. And I was just like, this this chick's going to be pretty cool. Uh, is the unmasked announcement up, Chris? Not yet. It's coming. Okay. I know we're having some technical difficulties. Tech uh, diff. Yeah. Today. So uh, up on the iBang today, there's this uh, story. The paramedics uh, who were busted for taking creep shots, creepy photos where they were doing a selfie war with each other while people were passed out in in the ambulance. Do you see that as a good thing or a bad thing? I, I mean, I think it makes the ambulance a, ride more fun. I would say this is a bad thing. But it's they had a contest. <laughs> It's very, very uncomfortable. I mean, it's it's at the point where it's like it's so low. And the article doesn't go into too much detail, but they dance around the fact that they were also like manipulating them and putting them in like positions and like mocking them. It's really horrible. This kind of stuff normally happens in an old folks home, but not so much in an ambulance. Ride. Yeah, like while you're in an emergency situation fighting for your life. But don't you think it's just the kind of dark humor that you need sometime to get you through a shift? <laughs> they see terrible things. I would, I would agree that dark... <laughs> <laughs> That's sometimes. what I was unaware of, was the doing the terrible things. Uh, but I, it reminds me of this, this... I guess it was like one of those like hard cop... I don't know, or like one of those 2020 type specials or something when I was a kid where they were showing uh, people mistreating uh bodies uh that uh, it was like in a funeral home and mm -hmm. they were like uncovering all these like photographs and weird stuff and it was just like really late at night and i was really little and you know when you don't like have an adult around to just be like hey what that what was your is whole childhood this? you're just like <laughs> you're just going like i don't know why but it just like disturbed me so bad and it and it just like freaked me out to my core the idea of like these just creepy weirdos doing weird stuff with bodies. Well, who else would work there? <laughs> I guess that's you know a I mean? good You'd point. have to be a creepy weirdo just to work there. All right, we're going to announce this on mass now. Chris, what's the date on that? The date is Wednesday, August 3rd at 1130 a.m. at the Sirius XM Studios. This should be fantastic. It is the one and only Penn Gillette. Oh. We know him as oh. Penn from Penn and Teller. He is simply one of the best uh, interviews of all time and has recently dropped 100 pounds. Wow. 100 pounds. That is phenomenal. I had no idea that he was doing this. Well, he's done it. Uh, also, of course, I'm sure he'll be talking a lot about the election. I kind of wish we were running him for that libertarian uh, ticket instead yeah. of Dalman Johnson, but... I don't know. Maybe I should vote Libertarian this time. Probably Libertarian or Green Party is going to yeah. get my vote. On the someone on the outside. I hate the two parties too much right now. But I hate now, them both. It's 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 a pretty brutal situation with the two of them. And again, this is it. Just feels like this is the most unpopular. It it just feels like the two most unpopular candidates, despite the fact that they're the last. Two people standing. Well, I can't stand the fact that a woman is running. I agree with the women of the country out there that this is ridiculous. You think uh, that that's the women of the country saying that? Right now it is, yeah. I, I don't watch. think it is. I don't and think it is. They're saying, how could we do this? Have you ever seen the way we act? I'm like, yeah, now you're turning me around on it. Um, but no, it would it would have to take the women of the country taken to the streets to s show that the glass ceiling matters to them. Because if it doesn't matter to them, it doesn't matter to me. Does it matter to you, Chris? Uh-uh. Vito, does it matter to you? No. I mean, enough to go to jury duty for? No. And you make sure that you don't drive, too. That's the luxuries of living in Manhattan. You got Uber and the two train. 
By the way, where did you guys pick up your Uber? Uh, 34th and like 9th. Oh, so you actually had to go to that one spot to get it? No, it took the train just because that was close to the entrance to the tunnel. Yeah, we just like kind of met kind of near where the tunnel was. I see. I see. I'm getting it now. Now it's all. It's coming together, right? You're starting to see the plan? It's all starting to make sense to me. (laughs) Um, By the way, where do you think, uh, who do you think I should vote for? Uh, Green Party or Libertarian Party? Go Libertarian. You ever voted for Libertarian? Uh, my f- All my initial votes were third party for years. But I'm not sure if, I, uh, if any of them were on the Libertarian ticket. I am not even exactly sure how a Libertarian thing would work with 330 million people. I know we would close down the highways, which would be nice, you know? That way we can have a bike trail. I say vote green. It'd what be, is they? It'd be sexist herb? if you don't, because Jill Stein's running. Is it herb or is it uh, green herb? Green planet. She's, she's only running on the marijuana ticket. That's it. What is her name? Jill Stein. Mm-hmm. That sounds like a made up, you know, name of somebody that's in a PR department somewhere. <laughs> I'm Jill Stein, and uh, <laughs> he'll be with you, and David will be right with you right now. He's taking care of some stuff he needs to do. Thanks, Jill Stein. I'll tell you that something that made me feel absolutely crazy. There is uh, this Irish show on the internet, and they make fun of American TV, and they did a thing on bad tattoos and made fun of my buddy Eastside Dave. Oh, come on. And his tattoo that was put on him on this show. That's so, hurtful. A guy that we brought in. Do you even remember how we found this tattoo artist? No, I think it was, was it a, I think Dave knew him. No, it had something to do with either a listener or a sponsor, but we've dragged this guy through the mud twice now. Once Dave being on TV, and now these guys mocking it out. It's on the I Bang, Chris. No, in Tara Bang, um, probably if it's not on Eastside Dave, Davy Mac. These Irish people judging Eastside yeah. Dave. Have you seen it yet? I have not seen this yet. All right, just watch it. America's worst tattoos today, which yeah. is, I mean, this is going to be. A humdinger, I assume. <laughs> Have you got any tattoos? I don't. I was gonna actually, when David Bowie died, ah, that's very uh, appropriate. I was gonna get a tattoo of him. I always find it funny when people get sports ones, like a month before Premier League finishes and stuff. Have you ever seen that one where they say this one is going to be one of those things where, like, you know, they have a hand holding a finger and, like, it's a baby's hand and it looks like a dick instead? <laughs> Hi, I'm Dave. I'm from New Jersey and I have America's worst tattoo. So, matter of fact, yeah. this is it. My tattoo is supposed to be the Sopranos. One of the Dave is off his face. <laughs> yes, he looks like he's on cooking. This is a nightmare. Yeah, it's pretty. Oh, for a second. Like- Never mind. But you can see, Gail, it's a beautiful tattoo. It's the entire... Yeah, this is great. Yeah. It's a great tattoo. Uh, you can see it looks like each of the Sopranos. Beautiful rendition. I ordered for the table, written yeah. underneath. Yeah, it was right after the... Uh, <laughs> sure, the big ep- finale. The, yeah, the disappointing <laughs> last episode. All right, go ahead. Mount Rushmore. You know when you have to press the head? <laughs> Look at Carmella. Oh, my God. It's terrible, right? Yeah. Jesus, they don't even have features. <laughs> Look at the one on his arm. They can fix that as well. Uh, I'm Irish, and I like the Celtic art. Okay. You're Irish. I don't think the Irish people want you. Of course he's Irish. Look at him. He looks like he's exploding the sun. It's probably been years. I take years that back. He I... stepped on a line of his. But he actually said, it, of course he's Irish. It looks like he's going to explode. <laughs> Fucking hilarious. Anyway, there it is. It's up on the eye bank. <laughs> look at him. Just look at him. Of course he is. He's off his face. Look, he's like he's on cocaine. Don't even have features. Cocaine. <laughs> Chris, what's up in your world, big man? Um, there was a cricket match in in Britain, and they stayed. The commentators found a sleeping gut man, and they just the way the cricket people treat a dude that's passed out. They First of all, drunk. how can anyone stay awake during a cricket match? <laughs> You got away with it. No one's seen it. <laughs> and they're balancing garbage on top of the man. The mind boggles. 
<laughs> oh! Still hasn't moved. That's great, Chris. Um, it is the Bennington Show. This is uh, the week that will be going to Montreal. And um should be a fun time. We're doing a couple on mass. You can come up and hang out with us, and I might be doing something later one of those nights. But, then, but I think most of this is just us running around Montreal. This is going to be us running around, seeing our old pals. It's going to be a lot of fun. So you can stop up, see us, just go to the iBang.com, iBang.com for that. On the right-hand side, it says, Unmasked is heading to Montreal for two shows. Click that, get tickets to see us. Vito, you're going to be running and gunning and jumping around, right? Yeah, we spoke last night. We is you and Jeffrey Gurian. Yes, me and Jeffrey Gurian spoke on the phone last mm-hmm. night. What are you guys most looking ex- uh, forward to doing? Uh, I know he's really excited for some red carpets that are going to be fun. Have some, you ever been on a red carpet before? I've never been on a red carpet. I am ecstatic. This is going to be huge for you. I say, I really feel like the two of you are going to be... It's like the new like buddy comedy. Like we've always been saying. It's a bunny comedy where neither one of them is funny. <laughs> We're going to be best buds <laughs> yeah. on this trip. I mean, have there, has there ever been a really sad movie about two people together? Beaches. Okay. You're Beaches. You're the... <laughs> Brian song. You'll actually be the girls' version of Beaches. <laughs> I think I think that most importantly, we're going to have to go over your wardrobe. I don't want you looking... Too much like Gurian? No, I don't want him to look too shabbish next to him because he's a very well-dressed man. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta put on my best A game. I know, maybe I'll get a nice wife beater. You should do uh, the Polly thing and try to cut your hair and dress just like him. <laughs> so great. where you go, you could be Maxi Me. You could be his <laughs> giant sidekick. <laughs> now, what version of Jeffrey will be up there? Because what's the temperature like right now? Is uh, it, is warm it be- in the daytime, chilly at night, like eighties during the daytime. But 62, 63 at night, so... So he could be doing a costume change, maybe. That would be yeah, great. Yeah, you'll have to bring a jack off. <laughs> now, you uh, you and him are staying in the same room together. This is going to be a 24-hour-a-day thing that you're running around, or what's going on? Yeah, I believe that we're, we're roommates. Um, yeah. We got two <laughs> twin beds. Try to stack them on top of each Please. other. Please. Bunk it up. So, yeah, but it's a bunk bed without the stuff. It's just one <laughs> mattress. I mean, he's not going to weigh that much on top of you anyway. <laughs> I want a top bunk. You know, I keep looking up at the DNC email hack. If we weren't all supposed to look at the fappening, why should we all look at people's emails? You know, I kind of felt sorry for that movie company. Because, by the way, in emails, people do badmouth people, even their friends. It's very common. In fact, I was shocked to even see Ariana Grande showed up in the DNC email hack. So it was uh, decided they were kind of asking, we'd like to do uh, a performance, Ariana Grande, at this gala that the president was going to. And they said, uh, no, she did the donut licking thing. (laughs) She said some pretty un-American stuff. They had her vetted anyway. They still did a background check on her. Everything clean except for the donut licking. They were still like, we can't get near this donut licking controversy. We want nothing to do with it. But don't they know she could sing like Cher and Celine Dion? I guess this was before that SNL episode where she rolled out so many impressions. I bet now that some time has passed, they would be fine with it. But who knew the the donut licking incident would follow her career Mm. in such a way? It is pretty, you know... uh, those things, they kind of discuss people. If you watch, uh, is it vice principals or assistant principals last night? Vice principal, yeah. There was a thing about leaving some spit behind for somebody else to drink. Did you, did you, any of you guys see that show last night? I no, last I night. have it recorded. Darkest half hour of TV I've ever seen in my life. Really? Darkest half hour, darkest scene took place that I ever saw on TV where I'm like, this is, does it is it maybe cross a line where you're like more uncomfortable than it is funny? I felt like it. I feel now that we're uh, you know Trump is so high up in the uh, in the ratings and stuff, and how dark his speech was and how dark the thing was. I'm like there is a darkness that I'm uh, all art is reminding me of the stuff that he's been telling us. 
you're not safe here, you're not safe abroad, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, oh my God, comedy is reflecting it. Movies are reflecting it. So uh, a scene went down that just literally felt like Trump's new America, which I'm going to catch up with. Don't get me wrong. Oh, you'll get I'll there, be yeah. there sooner or later. It's uh, going to be a big adjustment, but I don't know if it's going to be that big. I'm think maybe it's the true me. You know what I mean? <laughs> maybe the true me is uh, finally coming through. Hey, it's the uh, Bennington show. Come out and see us uh, with Penn Gillette. Penn Gillette. It's an unmasked. Is it August? I can't believe we're at August already. It's Wednesday, August 3rd. That's next week at 11.30 a.m. in the Sirius XM Studios in New York City. Wow. Um, will you be here or will you be at camp? I will be here. No camp for me. Oh, you're not doing camp. Oh, well, and Giants camp? Yeah, well, I'll be here. I'm going to be, during the week, I'll be here, and then on weekends, I'll be training. So they kickers don't train all weekend? I'm just, I'm just, I'm telling them I'm going to train the weekend. I saw that thing where a couple of kickers were killed in a one car accident at a kickers camp. Yeah, it was really sad. Any of the guys you know or? No one I know, no. I'm more like, kind of, I was friends with like Sebastian Janikowski. That's my guy. Hmm, it's weird. He's on the other side of the country though. Yeah, but you know, he comes out in New York every now and then. From my understanding, he never does. <laughs> I know the dude, Ron. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I want you to bring him and your girlfriend to the next get together that we're having. All right, I'll see what their schedule's like. Why don't you? Um, why don't you have your girlfriend come to the next unmask? Have her come to the Pendulette mask. I'll see if she's available August third. See if she'll ask a question. Okay. I would love that because it's. I like got a really perfect question for her. What's that? Am I real? <laughs> When you hear that out loud, it's gonna blow your mind. I, I really can't believe that she didn't come out to uh, GNR. That's when I thought I was expecting to meet her. You know, I know a very beautiful uh, girl that had a uh, a crush on Stanley, really? and she's off the market now. Oh yeah, you. I told you who she was before, <laughs> and you said no way. Mm -mm. Nope, taken, taken, man. Sorry, ladies. Sorry, all you ladies. Sorry, out there. laddie. <laughs> <laughs> I think Chris would be quite the catch for yeah. any kind of uh, alcoholic, drug addict, <laughs> uh, active. Sure. Hey, you want someone to enable you? Have you drank? Have you drank yet? Nope, not yet. It's, it's an amazing weird. year for him. It's amazing weird. year. No cigarettes either. Hey, yeah, we, well, right before we did our vacation, I thought you were having pretty bad withdrawals. And I want you to go get checked for it. You said you went and had your blood tested. Yeah, I, get, I think I get the results this week or next. Mm. I got to get another. So I was talking on um, the phone with uh, Gail's uh, grandmother yesterday. And um, so we were talking about, you know, Trump, how much he loves him, how much um, we're getting the country back, how it's going to be great. And then she goes, are you going to start watching that uh, reality show? And I go, which one? She goes, it's going to be like on Animal Planet, the guy, he had a show before, and she starts going like, <laughs> so I go, I don't know who you're talking about. She goes, you do know him. You've seen him before. And I go, I don't know what you're saying. She goes, he makes those crazy songs you listen to. It's like a nut. What? He's going to have a really good show on there. He's going to be with his kid. It's a good show. What's his name? I go, mom, I don't know who. She goes, you do know him. I go, I might know him, but I have no idea what you're talking about. She goes, you do. You're acting like you don't know him, but you do. And he has the, he makes a song and his wife is a talk, as a talk show host. And I go, Chelsea Handler is with, she goes, who? What are you even saying? No, the other guy. That's such a what nut with a crazy song. And they're like, this is going on for 10 minutes. And she's furious with me. That I don't know who she's talking about. And she goes, he's always yelling, Shannon, oh. Shannon. <laughs> and I'm like, I go, Sharon, is he yelling Sharon? And she's like, yeah. And I go, Ozzy Osbourne. She goes like this. God damn it. I knew that you knew who he was and you just weren't saying. I go, no, I didn't get a clue until Shannon. <laughs> Shannon was the first usable clue in this <laughs> incorrect but yeah. still able to figure it out and then i said to her i think hillary clinton's going to beat trump and just ruin the country <laughs> no <laughs> so what is this new aussie show that she's talking about on animal planet 
Uh, no, it's on the History Channel. Okay. I watched it last night. <laughs> That's the thing that annoyed me. I, I hung up. I go, well, I'll never watch that show. <laughs> and then I sat around like 12 o'clock in the morning. I go, they're shooting muskets. <laughs> so they're going around together and finding historical sites okay. and then doing stuff. Right. Doing historical things. Yeah. <laughs> like your favorite. I can't believe you wouldn't know Ozzy, your favorite, right yes, off the bat. That's a crazy song. <laughs> you like all his crazy <laughs> stuff he does. It was fucking so annoying and funny at the same time. I feel like I've been doing that now. What is it about moms that like when they that exact thing of saying like this is something you like and it's not something you like or they think it's something you why is it still infuriating like you're still eight years old right. you're like oh yeah you love that guy and you're like what that person I didn't never liked that and then it, <sighs> then you feel like you have to defend yourself. You know how many times she would say to me. You don't eat sushi. And I go, what What are you talking about? I do eat it. And I'm Mm-mm, like, I've don't. actually said, we've been talking about this for 25 years. <laughs> I don't have the ap- same appetite I had when I was six. That's like her saying to me, you love coloring. You know, you can sit and color for hours at a time. But do we get? Like, so fed up faster with anybody that we do I, with the no. person who loves us most? My my frustration is, I think, once, when I was very young, I told my mom that when I was having a sandwich and <laughs> chips on the plate, I said, I don't want the chips on the plate. The chips make the plate greasy, you know, like on a paper plate. Just put them on my sandwich. Okay? I'm a child. <laughs> And to this day, any time there is a sandwich, she goes, Gail, I didn't give you chips. And I'm like, I like chips. It's something, a weird thing I was feeling at that time because I didn't want, I didn't, I was grossed out by a greasy plate. I put said chips on the sandwich. I'm now an adult. No I am chips, well. Right? That's <laughs> the way you like. No I've chips? always liked chips. Too greasy. Why? And she's like, everyone got chips except for Gail. I still remember it. I'm like, no, you still get it wrong. It's no, what you do. <laughs> no greasy plate, right, honey? This one. But like, it's not even the specifics of remembering that. She just remembers it. She hates chips. And I'm like, this is not true. And then you find yourself defending, and you sound crazy. You're like, Mom, you know I like chips. <laughs> Why is everyone got chips with me, Mom? And then you're like, I sound like a nut. I'll make my own sandwiches for now. Forget on. it. No one understands how I feel about chips. Well, you should have joined me yesterday for the Shannon. <laughs> that was fun. That was some of the funniest shit, though, because it hasn't changed. Nothing <laughs> changed. It's the only constant I have in my life. Yeah, you don't like that, right? <laughs> no, I don't, Mom. I don't like adult food. You guessed right. <laughs> That's me. It's just something about mothers have that ability to just like turn you into ch- childhood. Like, I remember there was one time that she was telling a story <laughs> about you, and I was watching your face, and you were just like so irritated, <laughs> but you didn't want to like get angry. But she was saying something about how like the slang that you use or whatever and she was like and then he would say that's bad and i would go it's bad and he was like no bad means good and then you were just and you're sitting there going i don't think this conversation i think it happened on tv (laughs) you were like i don't think i came in there like yeah mom that's bad don't confuse me with vinnie barbarino (laughs) he's not your mom and she was just like you said that you used to say yeah that's bad mom and then, like, the other really funny thing that a mom will do is say, and do you ever hear from, and they'll drop a name from first grade. <laughs> and I'll go, no, not since I changed homerooms. <laughs> it's so great, though. It's so great to feel that way. Um, my um, My folks will also take somebody that we interviewed years ago and then tell me that they saw him on TV. And I'll be like, <laughs> I saw your friend on TV there the other night. He was still doing pretty good. Does he ever come back in? And, you know, you, you find out there's like Jeff Goldblum or something. And you're just like, well, he's not a friend of mine. It's a guy who came in and did a show. Well, he liked you. <laughs> I heard it. I know. I'll probably give him a call later. 
Uh, even my even my boyfriend's mother said to me when I said that we were going to see the Beach Boys play this festival in New York, and she's like, "But you interviewed Brian Wilson," <laughs> and she's like, "Yeah," and she's like, "Why don't you tell him? Like, tell him you remember me from the interview." I'm like, "This isn't gonna come up. Yeah. It's not. I'm gonna be. I'm not gonna be backstage." She's like, "But if I bet if you try to get backstage and you tell them that you know him," and I'm like, "I don't know him." That's, that I don't know him. That would be a lie. <laughs> you know him. He said he yells Shannon. <laughs> you know exactly who I'm talking about. <laughs> she thought that I used it to try to torment right. her. <laughs> now you're just messing with me. You're being bad. <laughs> what was the baseball thing you were bringing up uh, to me earlier? I forgot all about it already. Oh, yeah. This is the um, there's this article up about why uh, Major League is the greatest baseball movie of all time. So from like character development point. Do, do they the read, well, hold on. Do they read realize that there was a movie made called Pride of the Yankees <laughs> where no one could watch because of the end of it. <laughs> Luke Garrick was dying and being so. I mean, Major League is a fun comedy. It's, I love that movie, but I don't I, I don't think I would say of all time. I don't think it, I would say it was my favorite even baseball movie. Of all Vito time. is the only baseball guy I have here. Yeah, you heard me, Chris. <laughs> he's a Mets fan. Yes, but he goes to games. He follows. He's a real, he's a real baseball He boy. doesn't yell out that somebody's a baller and drop it at that. Best baseball movie of all time. Uh, I'm going to have to agree. I think Major League is the best baseball movie of all I time. That he is the bubblegum yeah. fan, too. I think Bull Durham for me. But is that coming from a lady's perspective? No, because no, no. I love I love that storyline. First of all, Bull Durham... Everybody always wants to say it's the most believable. But if you have a left-handed catcher who could hit for power, he would have been spending his 19th year. You know what I mean? Like, it just doesn't exist. Now, having said that, I may agree that Bull Durham, greatest baseball movie of all time. Chris? As a child, it was, well, it was, it was Major League. As an adult, it's The Natural. Oh, the natural. The natural. I love the natural. Now, the natural is almost as silly as Major League. It's magical. I mean, (laughs) none of this stuff would happen. And yet, at no time have I ever turned off the natural whenever I came across it. Sometimes I'll be like, this is weird with his lightning boy. But then I'm like, God, look at him. He fucking is a natural the way he swings. Um. But even even Bull Durham has a little bit of that magicalness, like her her personality. With Baseball them. is magic. Yeah. Baseball is magic. Like if you're going to have a kind of a magic mi- mixing the genre there, where you have something surreal or magical, I think baseball's the only. I mean, the only sport you could do that with. I like feel the dreams has that element to yeah. it, where it's kind of other. I'm going to give you one other. Well, there's a couple other sports. One is boxing, oh, yeah. where that thing of it's your day, and the other is horse racing movies. A horse racing movie, now at no time does football, I don't know whether we've ever had one good football movie. It seems like there's a boxing and or baseball movie out every year. It's like, it might be... The least cinematic. It's really strange. Like well, boxing, even probably more than baseball, is probably the most cinematic because it's man, like one on one drama, and, and that's the, what happens with baseball too, though. Right. It becomes a batter against a hitcher, a pitcher, or a guy running down a ball. But uh, but football. Well, even the other day when we were sitting around talking about seeing baseball when we were kids, I don't know if people have that nostalgic feeling about the first football game. They were taken to, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because it doesn't feel like it's just you and your dad enjoying the game. It's screaming, it's face painting. Like I, I, I can remember everything about the first time I was taken to a baseball game, but I was taken to a, a football game uh, and I felt like my dad took me to a riot. It right. was just for a little kid. I'm like, these men, not just on the field are being aggressive, but the men in the sands were fucking insane that day yeah they were everyone was plaster drunk well even for me like we were talking with barry last week about that feeling of going to a game live even if you aren't 
a kid who's really into baseball, like the first time you go to a baseball game, Mm -hmm. everything just seems so theatrical and the colors just like pop in a way. It's a beautiful park. Yeah. Where a football game, you're just seeing guys running together. You know what I mean? Like you, you definitely need more knowledge to understand what's happening in a football game. Baseball, ball, bat, glove. Got it. All right. I got it. I'm ready to, I'm ready to start watching this game. Um, here is uh, Angelo in Fort Lauderdale. Angelo, what's up? Hey, Ronnie, how are you? Cool. Okay. Uh, there's, 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 there's no crying in baseball. Uh, that is, of course, League of Their Own. Yeah. Now, here's the interesting thing about League of Their Own. Men like that movie. You would think that would be a girl's only movie, but everyone gets it who's a guy. And it ain't just for Tom Hanks. I mean, you're sitting there and you're like, I really hope the Peaches end up winning the championship. <laughs> I, don't, I can't believe how quickly that will fall in that thing of I really want to see us go place. I adored that movie yeah. as a little girl and watched it over and over. Just thought it was the greatest. And then remember the first time seeing it being like, I think I think I really want to get into playing baseball. And I'm like, oh, you actually have to be athletic. There's that part to it. Here's the thing. I mean, doing this radio show, and Chris Stanley, to me, the Marla Hooch of (laughs) radio. How about that, Chris Stanley? (laughs) What a hitter. Uh, Let's go over here to uh, Danny. Danny, what's up? Hey, what's going on? Uh, That guy just stole my thunder, so I was calling about uh, League of Their Own All Self, best baseball movie that cast is amazing. But in your opinion, does Dottie drop the ball on purpose? Oh, yeah. I think she does. I think she gives it up for her sister. You think she does? Yeah. Oh, fuck. Even I though because... that's the thing. She's such a competitor, right, that the game was over for her then. Her man was coming back. She wasn't going to bone fucking Tom Hanks. But you know what I felt bad about? Dottie being the one going back. I mean, she didn't even fucking play a full season. I know. It was really upsetting that she goes back. And it looked like she... Didn't have anyone to go with, too. Like, there was no family or whatever that cared about that. Yeah. I mean, Dottie, old Dottie, was heartbreaking to me. And then also a fucking middle-aged man now who's going, you're gonna lose. <laughs> Do you remember me? Like Nelson. This, yeah. <laughs> Nelson, how are you, darling? Uh. And my bug-eyed sister. <laughs> fucking girl. <laughs> like having a frog as a sister. <laughs> And to be totally honest, she blew as a ball player. I and mean, she was just terrible. She's too Kid? emotional. Yeah. You didn't like it? <laughs> lost her shit no. all the time. Also, I didn't think that Madonna looked like shit like she could play. On the other hand, Rosie looked <laughs> Rosie fantastic. Looked like <laughs> Rosie, the real deal. Yeah. Rosie looked like she could move the ball around. Yeah. She definitely looked like the real deal. Rosie and her dad was like one of my favorite things. Dad, you're embarrassing her. Uh, oh my god! Now I want to watch that movie again. It's so good. Jay, Jay, what's up? Ronnie, million bucks. Million bucks. Hey, um, I know uh, I, I, you're looking for the best uh, baseball movie. I think the best baseball movie, which may be the best sports movie of all time, is The Bad News Bears. But I, I know that your dad is always on the lookout for uh, good baseball movies, and there's one that used to be that was like an HBO made for uh, HBO movie, which is one of those little budget movies. But it's called Long Gone, and it's got a great cast. It's uh, William Peterson, um, Virginia Madsen, who is you know really young. She's sensational in it. Um, Dermot Mulroney is in it. Uh, uh, Henry Gibson and and actually Teller is in it, and Teller actually speaks. He's got a speaking role in it. Well, he speaks for real. He just does his speaking right. kind of teller. Right. Um, uh, it, long gone. I haven't seen this movie. Check it out. All right, I will do it. Thanks, buddy. Peace. Thanks, bud. Here's our buddy Kyle. Kyle, what's up, man? What up, guys? I agree with you uh, that Major League and A League of Their Own are great baseball movies, but the one that I think captured kind of the childhood wonder of baseball is The Sandlot. I think that's right. the greatest baseball movie ever. Um, it's, again, a little too magical. Yeah. The chances that those guys would have grown up (laughs) to be in that. I mean, to be totally honest, getting a play-by-play job is probably fucking harder. You know what I mean? There's not that many jobs out there. 
you know, and whoever gets it keeps it for their entire life. But Sandlot is how I first started playing baseball. You know what I mean? I played Sandlot for years, and I think I only played 11 and 12 for uh, uh, in Little League. It didn't occur to me to go hit a ball off a fucking tee like a moron. But that romance of you and your buddies, yeah. and, you know. Well, it was like the premise was just like stand by me with baseball instead of a body. I guess you're right about that. I mean, it would have been nice with a body, but <laughs> still. Sandlot for you? Love the Sandlot as a kid. I love the fact that they used the babe's ball because my dad came home from this L.A. trip and he said, here's a sign, Don Drysdale baseball, because he was... You know, out there for some reason, and Drysdale came into the suite, got a signed ball, and I fucking used that ball. And uh, and you know what my father said? Well, that's what baseballs are for. He goes, what, what happened to the Drysdale ball? I go, our other ball went in the woods. He's like, well, that's what baseballs are for. He loved that he I loved- end up using a signed ball in a fucking backyard game somewhere. That's I thought re- it was great. That's so sweet. Um. And everybody that was playing was fucking laughing their ass off, too. Because he wasn't a Phil and never would be. Uh, Frank, what's up? Best baseball movie of all time is Bang the Drum Slowly. A little depressing there, right? Yeah, but it gives you the the, uh, infighting in the clubhouse. And it was back in the old days when the guys had jobs in the offseason. Yeah. Um, Michael Moriarty playing like a Tom Seaver golden boy. Uh, Mary Pistolaglione, just that conversation alone. I can't get too involved with um, cancer, though, when I'm enjoying a baseball movie. You know what I mean? Too sad. I want the saddest thing to happen is somebody's <laughs> fucking hitless. You know? <laughs> I want that to be it. Somebody might go back to the minors. Uh, hey, Joe, Joe in Milwaukee. Yeah, the funniest thing about League of Their Own, that little fat kid who used to tease the women. Yeah, yeah, I hated that. He, you know that 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 fat kid grew up. He's still saying that today to Hillary Clinton as the governor of New Jersey. Yeah, oh, it's, it's Chris Christie. Christy. Yeah. All right. The joke. Peace. Um, Charlie, Milwaukee. Yeah, my favorite movie, Sixty One. I love the dynamic between Madel and Maris. That one season. Yeah, they. Re- I think Billy Crystal directed that, and. uh He's a very serious Mantle fan. You know what I mean? Like, almost like, dude, you're still talking about Mantle. You know, a lot of guys played. <laughs> still Mantle with you. But that's what happens with Yankee fans. They get fixated on one thing. One, and they, dude. They think there's nothing else. Uh, but, you know, it's very low budget, but uh, certainly worth watching. Here's Adam. Adam, what's up, buddy? Adam. Oh, hey, man. Yeah. Um, sorry to forgive you. Um, I was really moved to call in when you started talking about that ball going in the woods with the autograph, because when I was a kid, I got to go to Montreal and meet the whole Expos team that didn't win the World Series and get my gloves signed, and then kept using the gloves to all the autographs <laughs> wore off, and I always sort of thought, that's what gloves are for. Um, I'm going to talk about Field of Dreams in just a second, but my favorite line in Major League, because we were just talking about this, and there's a Ringer article about it, is when uh, Harris is upset with with uh uh, with Joe Boo, and he said, are you saying Jesus Christ can't hit a curveball? Yeah. I just think that, that <laughs> kills me every yeah. time. The most preposterous thing. But I just had the I'm, – I'm a Jays fan, and uh, I just had the benefit this year of going down to Fenway Park uh, for the first time. And that's what Fenway is. It's just it, – it, I'm sorry, what, what Fenway and what the other dreams is, is there's just – I'm a hopeless romantic for the game, and I think there's a lot of that in there. And Field of Dreams, I was like, I, I used to cry at the end. I used to cry with the, hey, Dad, want to catch. I find now I start crying as soon as he steps across the line and turns into an old man again. Yeah, I'm that kills done. me. It kills me. Yeah. And there's so much, I mean, what's so cool about baseball is all the redemption um, that you can fail a lot. I think maybe that's right. the corollary with comedy, I think, too, that you fail a lot. And that that failure builds, you know, 330 is like a Hall of Famer, right? right? And I think that there's so much redemption in that movie for everyone. And but with, with so much great little bits of baseball, I, I, frankly, I mean, Major League is the one that has the best baseball stuff. I mean, the commentary, the way that the way that Bob Euchre's like lying about everything, you know, like hilarious, a, just a, a bit outside, happened, like, you know, <laughs> yeah. barely tapped, like yeah. everything about Major League is right. But but Field of Dreams really hits on the romantic side. So anyways, have a great day, guys. You too. Um, yeah, that is, 
strikingly romantic and people feel more romantic about baseball than they feel about basketball or football. Um, but that little bit, uh, like when he walks back and he's an old man and he goes, I better be getting home. She's going to be thinking I have a girlfriend. And you just like, but you're so old. You don't couldn't have a girlfriend That's now. No way. You're elder. If I never was a, a doctor, that would have been bad. That would have been a tragedy. Oh God, that kills me. There's about 19 different things that kill me in that movie. And I get how corny it is. I understand it. Doesn't need to be pointed out to me, but it crushes me. Yeah, I, I'm an easy crier and I can cry when something is corny and still be like, well, that was corny. It doesn't mean it's not going to affect me. Right. It still was really fucking emotional. But don't, but there's also like, there's so many things in that where, you know, that, that field is the Tito's moment that way. Always thought. like everyone is telling him no, but he just feels it's the right thing to do. He has this obsession to build this field. Uh, and then knowing that he went back and found an old writing hero of his and moved him into the next, it's that, that point that we don't know what our purpose, our life purpose is. Uh, Chris was telling me the other day, his, uh, life purpose was eating slices of pizza i go now it is but you might find I feel gifted but even in the future you might find that that you'll feel something good about doing your job well oh you know what i mean i even wish that you know the kicking was where his head was at but i guess he, he was yeah, born to eat he's gonna kick pizza. himself in the back of the head is what he's gonna do <laughs> nope, you're gonna embarrass us i want you to stop i'm not gonna embarrass anyone you're gonna be proud of me uh Hey, Rob, what's up, buddy? Ronnie B., um, a great father-son, a movie about baseball uh, featuring a father and a son, Frequency. Yeah, that's a very strange movie. Uh, pretty much shot in your neighborhood, right, Chris? Yeah, I think in like Long Island City Astoria. Is that where it was? Yeah. I know it was in Queens, but the premise of that, that you could somehow pick up the past because they're, you know what I mean? It loses me a little bit. Crazy. And well, was it about the 69 Mets? You never saw this Mets movie, Vito? No, I've never even heard of this movie, but what? now that I see it's about the 69 Mets, I'm going to go see it immediately. How do you, first of all, you're not going to go see it. It's been out of the theaters. <laughs> Second, you act like you're a fan of things and you're not. Um, I saw uh, somebody interviewing Trump the other day and they said that when he walked through the white light thing, that the guy said that was so WWE and he goes, Vince called me that night and said, great entrance. And then Trump goes, that's never happened before that entrance. And I'm like, I've been to rock shows, dude. I've seen that entrance. Yeah, it exists. That's what is funny that you used it, but it's not like we've never seen it before. <laughs> uh, the, uh, whatever her name is Wasserman. She won't get to hit the gavel tonight. Debbie oh. Wasserman Schultz. She's oh, done. They're all done. They're all done. I'm looking at this now. Trump is up 45 fucking percentage points. What? Jesus. 45? That was just... She close it down tonight. You know what she should do? Go home and make bake a pie. Go bake a pie. Do it for Bill. Uh, let's go to uh, is it Bill in Missouri? What's up? Hey, you know, I, I'm thinking maybe I'm dreaming about this movie. It maybe never existed. Just your screener picked up like three times to ask me the name of the movie. Trouble with the curve. No, that's an actual movie. Yeah. Who do we have screening? Okay, cool. So it was a good flick, I thought. Clint Eastwood. Yeah, Clint Eastwood uh, uh, directed it. Uh, a couple I didn't years. see that one. Yeah, uh, you know, it's that. I don't know. Wait, did he just star? Or did he direct? It's one that my dad likes. No, he started it too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he started it too. He was the recruiter. See, so and uh, he went blind, and his yeah. wife then, or no, his daughter ended up helping him out. It was a great flick. Yeah, my uh, my dad likes stuff where older people know stuff too. That they can explain to younger people. That's big for him. <laughs> yeah. 
All right, we got into this baseball movie talk, but we got a guest coming in a couple of minutes. We need to break first, Chris. Yes, we do. Why don't we break? Hey, if you want to come see us in New York City, unmask the great Penn Gillette coming in, talking about his new book. I'm sure he'll talk about a million things because that's the kind of conversationalist he is. He's one of my favorites of all time. That's happening Wednesday, August 3rd at 1130 a.m. at the Sirius XM Studios in New York City. Go to theinterrobang.com for a chance at free tickets. Right back, Bennington. Bennington is back, and we've got Jess Salomon in studio. You can read Jess's piece on Mike Ward on the Interrobang. Uh, Jess is performing Friday, August 5th at QED in Astoria at the Transplant Show. Go to JessSalomon.com for additional dates. Nice to see you. We just read your uh, article on the Interrobang, and we're trying to figure out Canadian law, how it's different from American law when it comes to free speech. Well, American law is the broadest. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are basically, I don't know that there are really any or very, very few limits. So I don't even think, I like hate speech, we have hate speech laws in Canada. I'm not sure. I'm not an expert on American law, but I don't even know that they exist here because um, Donald Trump, right? <laughs> well, yeah, well, yeah, we do. I mean, uh, I think, you know, we have hate crimes like you can't attack someone for being, for a certain reason. Right. Like, you can attack them if they said something to you, and that's one crime. Right. But they will put on the hate crime. If you if you go, oh, myself and my friends are going to go beat up some Swedes. And <laughs> sure. I, I say Swedes. Just a regular Friday yeah. activity. Yeah. No one's ever went and done Swede bashing. <laughs> Spencer, how's everything going, buddy? Okay? Everything's perfect. All right. <laughs> I, Did you show them around? You take care of them? He gave me a quick uh, rundown of history, pointed out Hoda, uh, Hoda in the other room. <laughs> yes. and, uh, yeah, yeah. He has attended. This is a big summer for Spencer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I asked him. He's, he's having the best time. Yeah. <laughs> So in Canada, yeah. you, uh, hate speech is something you can be fined for, or can you? It actually can be, be a criminal act. I mean, wow. that's. I think that's the difference. Is that you know, hate crimes are based on deeds, and mm-hmm. hate speech is is words, right? right. But usually, there it's a pretty high standard to meet a hate speech uh, crime. You know, like right. you need to be basically inciting people to hate a person or right. a group based on a protected ground, like their race or ethnicity or religion or whatever. Yeah, which is not which is not the case in, right. in Mike Ward's joke. He's making fun of a disabled kid's uh, appearance, right? Uh-huh. And he just basically calls him ugly, which is he's not telling people to go bully this kid. Right. He's not inciting people to hurt disabled people. You know, he's not calling them subhuman. But it's 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 a, it's a cruel joke for sure. <laughs> right. It's just I don't think illegal. Now, when did you when do you feel like this change happened? Because you had kind of explained the way in the article, yeah, uh, the way that it was originally intended, which was right. to you know if you were saying something that would be illegal with your speech yeah. or that would like you said that would cause an act. Right. But when do you think that it started to become this gray area where something like this would happen to Mike Ward? Happen? Well, this I think this is the case where that's yeah. happened, where it's opened up now a whole question of like what qualifies as in this case it's a the the alleged crime is discriminatory speech, mm-hmm. which is not hate speech. And so we can Canada we have laws against defamation, uh, which is you know also libel. Uh, those are kind of the same thing, and uh, against hate speech. Um, but this is opening everything up to include discriminatory speech, where the effect is you know uh, a kind of emotional harm on the person. And uh, and and some people have talked about this as being like a case of bullying. And I think that, you know, if that's the case and they should have pers- the, the family and, and the child should have pursued. He's not a child anymore. He's 19, but should have gone through the the avenue to pursue uh, the case as a bullying case. I don't think that it would have worked because it's a very tenuous link between Mike Ward's responsibility and this kid being bullied at school. Unfortunately, we know the world is a. I don't know if you can swear a bad yes. place. Yes. <laughs> People are mean. Yeah. And he happened to have gone from like a special needs school to uh, like regular person school around the time when this joke was being made. So, you know, he claims he blames a lot of it on Mike Ward. Um, people did repeat his jokes and everything. And I, it's a it's a really sad situation. Sure. I feel bad for the kid. Yeah. But um, but I think you need to, you know, to a certain extent, put that aside and, and look at what the law is. It is. Well, first of all, I think Canada loves their we're nice. <laughs> Most of the people who tell me that they're polite are always Canadians. They'll say, you know, we're so polite. And I go, someone else has to say that to you. And, like, <laughs> and I'm not even kidding. It's in my bio. Did you yeah. guys notice? Yeah. But the kids in the hall said, 
to me, well, we're nice as people. And I go, you're vicious. I <laughs> know you guys. You are vicious. And yet they all say that they are. So so you, you guys love that reputation. I guess that is that is a reputation that Canadians hold on to. I don't yeah. personally agree with it. I find people in New York are nice. I think that people don't have a lot of time for stuff, but it's not right. like they're they're mean. If they don't have time for stuff, it's not personal. They're just people are busy here. Um, but I I don't I don't know where that reputation. It's maybe there are certain areas of Canada that are people are nice, but um, Montreal isn't one of those places. No, <laughs> no, no. But that's one of the things that we do like about French people is that they. Yeah. Don't have time for you. Right. I mean, <laughs> there is something likable and urban about people who act like, hurry up, hurry up. What do you want? Yeah, I like it. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, the free speech issue to me is always interesting because most of the time now you're not attacked by the government. It's people who organize together to make sure that you won't work. Right. And that that is something that's very hard to defend. Yeah. And it seems like that's almost bullying. You yeah. Know? And actually, the, the whole this tribunal system, the commission system that we have mm-hmm. um, is something that was set up to deal with cases of discrimination um, where people don't get a job or don't get an apartment or aren't allowed access to a certain kind of service because of their race, religion, disability. Whatever. Sure. And and that was why these were created, because there was a gap. And this is also a place where people don't need to, to pay to be defended like the the government, the commission takes your case for you against that employer or whatever. And so they do serve an important function. I just don't think that they were ever meant to be litigating and imposing limits on freedom of, of speech. Right. Especially as concerns, you know, the, the arts. Yeah. That is always a strange thing because, you know, this thing about not being offended, most of the movies that I see are somewhat offensive on some level, but anyone <laughs> who had a violence problem, you know, any yeah. when, when someone in your family has gone through something traumatic, if they've been attacked or in a car accident, movies suddenly become almost unwatchable. Right. Until they can get. I yeah. mean, movies are unbelievable. They're so violent. Yeah. yeah. Without even meaning to be. Yeah. You know. That's just the standard. Yeah, that's just an operating standard that takes place. So that kind of offensiveness, you never hear from people going, I went to a movie, I thought I was going to enjoy it, and I saw a woman get shot in the head. But they will say, I thought I was going to a nice movie, and I saw a woman's breast, and I need (laughs) to do something about this. <laughs> that is people take so many different lines, you know. Like, yeah. there's I've been at comedy shows where, like, there's been a, a series of different jokes sexist, homophobic, racist, whatever. But you know, one person in the audience um, gets upset because there's a joke, you know, um, that's a fat shaming joke, yeah. Uh, and that's what they take issue when they've been laughing at the sexist joke, the homophobic right. joke, the racist <laughs> joke. They're like, hold on, you know, because that affects it's a them, thyroid, you know? yeah. okay? Yeah. It's a How thyroid, <laughs> but that, that being and this is so much a part of the conversation right now is this idea of like who's PC, who's not PC, who's telling people that they can't be PC. When you think about something like that, uh, in as compared to something like what's happening with Mike Ward, it's very yeah, different. Totally. And I think that what's difficult about it is because it is uh, normally acted out by corporations. And that's yeah. something that we don't really feel or or have any control of. So it isn't the case of someone's being arrested for saying something in this country yeah, right. or somebody's being tried for what they've said, but they're getting fired. And then people are saying free speech, but it's like, but that's not, you know, the government not, is not protecting yeah. you to well, the, stay employed because you made a bad joke. Distinction. Yeah. yeah. Well, here's the other thing too. And comics, I think make this mistake when they're now saying, uh, you know, college audiences are too PC, right? Right. But then I'm going, but you guys will do corporate gigs and do whatever, you know, they tell you to do. So right. what is it about what I think they want the college audience to have the same 1960s, <laughs> you know, kind of feel yeah. about it. But those kids are different. Yeah. And, you know, and, you know things change and, and, and tastes change and, yeah. and, and standards of what's acceptable change. And, and, I, and comedians have a, a job to uh, to take some of that on board and to adapt to the times, I think. And and I don't think I'm not one of these people that thinks that, like 
PC culture is ruining comedy. Um, I think it's moving it in another direction that I think right. can be positive. Um, if people can keep an open mind to listen to the end of the joke and don't, you know, immediately shut down because they hear right. a word. Right. Right. Um, and I don't think that, you know, speech is without consequence. I just don't think that it's appropriate. And I don't feel comfortable with, the, you know, a tribunal deciding what is and isn't OK. No, but, yeah. you know, by all means, like, you know, send a letter, boycott Mike Ward. I mean, I happen to really <laughs> like him and know him on a personal level. Yeah. And he's a lovely guy. And I like a lot of his comedy. But, um, but was yeah, he I mean, just shocked when this came down? Was he could he believe that he found himself on the side of I I don't know. I haven't asked him personally, but I, I can I can imagine that it came as a shock. Um, I know he's gotten a lot of press out of it, which is always, <laughs> Listen, yeah, exactly. yeah. Yeah. But it is, it is true. Fat shaming is an interesting one because of Amy. I think Amy brought that into everybody's attention that whenever there's a picture of her, someone's got to respond to it. But yeah. then if you look at Amy's comedy, it's very aggressive. Right. You right. know, so. But, but she has always handled that in a, in a very funny way. And I think that's why she's good at what she does yeah. is that she doesn't. I personally, I don't find that she goes too far in a preachy direction, but she normally takes her show and goes, well, how can I bring attention to this and make it really funny? Right. So I'm pointing the joke at somebody. But maybe it's her fans that are like. Maybe. You know, yeah. Yes. That's the thing. Some people are amazing and have the worst fans. Yeah. <laughs> I would say almost everyone. <laughs> yeah. Even Bernie, uh, even Bernie Sanders, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bernie Sanders uh, fans ought to just be carrying Trump things today. <laughs> but it is, uh, and there's bands that I, I would not even think of getting into because their fans are so obnoxious. I don't yeah. want any part of them. <laughs> I'm not going to be ants marching, thanks to your fans. It's nothing <laughs> to do with you. I'm sure the albums are good. I can't put up with those people. But that, that happens, uh, uh, you know, Jim Norton's fans that would repeat his jokes. It sounds a million times worse. Yeah. Right, like right. I know Jimmy, I know how funny he delivers it. Let him do it. It's, he's a character. Like people on stage are, it's a, an extension of themselves. Right. Many times. I'm not saying like everyone up there is playing like an Andrew Dice Clay character, but yeah. it is a part of a performance. And, and it's very clear when somebody is using comedy as uh, a cover for hate speech you know you can tell the difference between something that is intended to be a joke even if it's cruel even if it's hurtful it's right. structured a certain way i mean it's there's absurdity in it i mean and mike ward's joke had all of those comedy components right well see i think that's what happens is that some people can do that incredibly well and then there's open micers who yeah. they they're they're going to start like I'll start where Andrew Dice Clay stopped. That'll be my yeah, yeah. starting point. Right. Not realizing it took him ten years before he could get that character yeah. on TV. Yeah, yeah. I go to open mics and I think maybe the tribunal was right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> open mics are. I mean, it just feels like elbows and knees sometimes. You just yeah. like it's a very it's nothing looks easier than stand up. Yeah, comedy. And yet nothing is tougher to get to that point to where it looks easy. And I will say I've yeah. been to open mics where the the exact thing of they get upset when they don't get a laugh and they're like, oh, what? That's offensive. That's too oh, PC you for you. And you're so like, sick. oh, no, no, no. It's just, it's just not funny. Yeah. It's all yeah. it is. Like, that's why we're we're all being quiet. you think you're the first one to make this joke. But right. I've heard this joke like right. 20 years ago. <laughs> Uh, the fact that there is a generation that comes after you that doesn't agree with you, though, I think is the first shock. You know what I mean? Of, of aging? Yeah, that's the first <laughs> shock yeah. of aging. And I remember when looking at hip hop kids going, do you realize how much great music that you're pushing aside <laughs> by black people, by the way, black people <laughs> sing and play instruments, you know, like that thing. And, um, and I would, you know, you would think, OK, that's only going to last so long, but it's gone on yeah. forever. And I think you, you are right when you say like there is the, there, uh, the same reason that these kids are PC is for the same reason that their parents said, oh, no, blacks can be in restaurants. Well, right, my right. parents are nuts. You know what I mean? Like, this is just another it's, movement yeah. along. And it is, it's hard to think about, you know, the kind of growing pains that change when something is either entertaining to you at one point and then generationally it moves. I'm sure there are plenty of people who are like, 
what blackface was funny like that was great what happened in, it was so Quebec, lighthearted uh, it's still acceptable in Quebec <laughs> <laughs> it's still it's yeah. happened recently yeah. in the theater world and uh, people defended it so yeah well uh, <laughs> Quebec is funny too because it is funny. <laughs> contortionists can still work pretty regularly there. <laughs> there is a there's an old school show business thing that takes place and when i say old school i mean 1800s <laughs> where some of that uh stuff but have you ever seen like uh, some hispanic guys will go to mexico and south america and they do stand-up and the people think they're insane because they don't, they don't even have storytelling. Right. It's still guys running into each other. Yeah, they still are into the com- the slapstick yeah. kind yeah. of comedy. Yeah, yeah. Is still totally. what they do, and and big characters, and then a guy comes in, he's like wearing a diaper. And like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What is this? What year yes, is this? They like from? really hit you over the head. Like. <laughs> yeah. We're talking to Jess Salomon. Uh, you can read the article that we're talking about. Her article on Mike Ward on the Interbang, uh, and she is performing uh, this Friday, August or no. No, Friday, August 5th at QED uh, in Astoria at the Transplant Show. Go to JessSalomon.com for all additional dates. I should, I should say that the Transplant Show is about people who have moved to oh, America. Is that right? It's not people who have had transplants. <laughs> <laughs> See, either one of those shows I think would be interesting. You know, <laughs> kidney guy comes up, started to kick in. I'm feeling better. Um, but you are... Now, how do you think it's different from you coming down from Canada than it is somebody coming from the Midwest? And moving to New York. Is it a different experience? I mean, in some ways, it's I'm used to New York because I've been coming here over the years. Montreal mm-hmm. is, is so close. I've always loved New York. So um, and I don't come from, let's say, a small town or something. Right. Uh, and but, you know, it's it's different here for sure. I mean, New York is, is a tough it's a tough comedy scene because there's so many people that are so talented and you you know, you're starting at the at the bottom. Right. Like mm-hmm. um, I, I in Canada, like the bottom is, you know, a guest spot on a on a show on a weekend. And, right. and here there's like a check spot and also like a, a, like late night at two in the morning spot. There's like a different like a different uh, starting point And it's all exciting. And um and motivating and i don't know so i'm very grateful to be in america mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah i don't know i guess culturally maybe there there are definitely some differences do you feel probably. like a transplant or do you feel like a new yorker i i don't feel like a new yorker yet mm. i i can't wait till that till that happens a lot of things are still new to me the politics here is is completely different and um and okay. i question sometimes the timing of my decision <laughs> to move here with my uh with my muslim canadian wife who's also a comedian <laughs> and uh i'm watching the yeah. election pretty nervously cuz i i didn't expect that um it could go this far that trump could go this far well, not only uh going this far but the fact is that no amount of facts is going to change it now no. We can see that so the, the, you know, he said this, but it's really this. They're like, yeah, but, you know, people, yeah. they seem to be wanting to go in this direction. Now, I can understand completely because he's running against a woman and she'll probably destroy everything because she's a woman and he's okay. a guy. <laughs> but um, it the the uh, the burn the witch thing that took place with the, you know, not only are we not voting for her, but we want her in jail and she's responsible. Which they'll drop immediately as soon as they of get, course. They, of it's course. just a thing of the moment to get them hyped but, up. It's, I mean, so, it's all hyping it's, up, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, the next couple of months are really going to be insane. But uh, and, after, after his speech um, at the RNC, that night, um, immediately articles were coming out. Like we have just gone through, fact checked everything. It doesn't matter. Like yeah. it was like, oh look, a seventy five percent of the no, statements because, he made about yeah. the way, you know, this is, you know, anytime he threw a number out and this percentage and this amount, it, they were not. None of them were true. Um, but it doesn't really matter because then you say them and they're out in the universe and people are going to yeah. kind of hold on to those I things. I feel like the idea is just to like lie, lie, lie as much as possible so that people don't even care about the last lie because it's already on yeah. to the next yeah. lie. So like there's no chance for fact checking or any kind of... And any scandal or any any uh, mishap that either party has is only... It's just like the last one is only the most recent. It's not like anyone stands back and goes, look, this is the 15th thing that's come no. out of this campaign. Yeah. No, both these parties are yeah. insane right now. But uh, I love that he was saying that there was 180, 
thousand or something running around the country committee these crimes i'm like i kind of live here this city what used to be so scary for real yeah scary yeah, yeah. in the 70s and 80s no one leaves here thinking i hope i don't get in a fight tonight it used to happen all the time where you go we're either going to go to the theater or get mugged but we're going to the theater <laughs> one way or another <laughs> we're going to go there i mean chris you were a little kid then yeah. But walking down Broadway would be very dangerous. 57th Street would be v- very dangerous. Around here, like on like 8th Avenue, it was terrible. And like the Port Authority, like even since the 90s, the Port Authority was fucking horrible. A guy pulled a knife on my dad once in the Port Authority. <laughs> yeah, those things would happen on a regular basis. Now, there is crime because there's so many people. But you would think if the country was as scary as they painted it last week, we would be the first to know. Right. You know exactly. what I mean? We would know. You know what? I say that there should be some Mike Ward laws here. Now, <laughs> I think you should That's be. That's what we'll call them. <laughs> I think Name them after to, a French Canadian. I think you're going to have to prove this. But he um, he moved around a little bit because he, he they took away that he could comfortably say, uh, radical Islamic. So now he's saying certain countries where terrorism has taken place. And they said, well, what about France? He goes, exactly. Yeah, France. <laughs> We're going to keep French people <laughs> out. <laughs> no. What? <laughs> like that. Good idea. Yeah. All right. I'll add that to the list. <laughs> but uh, this is the this is the real time, I think, to be here. I think <laughs> the next couple of months, because we all want the apocalypse we all there is an element of that i guess yeah yeah Yeah. i mean i think you want to be there when the world ends you want to be there when the asteroid hits and maybe this is the feeling that it gets you know it gets more and more surreal as it goes i guess there's there's a part of the american psyche that i'm picking up on which is people just wanting to see what the next thing is is going to be like they want us they don't want this story to end right like what well, what happens when he's president? You yeah, know? if we like, don't get the third act, what was the purpose like how, of this? Yeah, how hilarious would it be to see this guy <laughs> sitting down with Angela Merkel? Like, what would that look like? You know, I actually, like, I agree that that could be amazing, but I also think that there can be something very <laughs> funny about if he loses, how uncomfortable that will be for the Republican <laughs> Party to be like, yeah, so that was a weird phase that yeah, we... Yeah, yeah. We all jumped into this thing. It was strange. You got to admit, though, a lot of them have not jumped into it. A lot of people who we, you know, accused of being dangerous in the past are saying no. <laughs> we had no idea what yeah. dangerous was. We didn't know, <laughs> you know. Um, well, it'll be it'll be fun. One way or another. I mean, I listen. The politics here yeah. is never boring. You know, yeah. that's that's for sure. But this is the first election that I think. That we feel if it goes some way, we might end up seeing like lions in the street and monkeys running up <laughs> through the libraries. You know what I mean? It just feels. Why did he let all the zoo animals out? <laughs> You're going to love it. They're free. <laughs> this is great. The zoo animals all the out. people in jail. <laughs> yeah. All yeah, the man. animals out free. Yeah. <laughs> just just, just like all the bat- cells open. It's like a Batman movie. Yeah. Just like they just all rush the well, place. Somebody brought up the other night. Uh, and it was a Republican who said it. He said, is he running for mayor of Gotham City? Because it did <laughs> feel like the Joker's out there. The Penguin. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I think, you know, selling fear has never been a, a a bad thing to do. I mean, people have always succeeded on selling that kind of darkness, you know. It's remember, worked a lot, yeah. Remember it wasn't that long ago we all laughed at the mayor of Toronto and we just felt like... <laughs> Look how nuts they are in Toronto yeah. that they could do this. Yeah. What were they thinking? We'd kill to have that guy right now. Yeah. <laughs> I would kill to have a guy all drunk up doing a Jamaican accent at 3 o'clock in the morning. Please, yeah. Rob Ford. <laughs> he was the best. And now he's sick, isn't he? He died. He, he passed away. I'm so sorry I didn't to know that, that he died. News. I yeah. know. Yeah. He I, passed I felt away. Like it- who did this? The CIA? <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't polite enough. So I didn't know that him. he died. I know that that he was sick. If it was yeah, what, yeah. like a year ago? A year? Not ago? a year ago. Was I think it was a few months. Oh, really? Yeah, just a few months ago. I feel like I want to hang myself with a belt now. I'm that so was a, sorry. That was my favorite dude ever. <laughs> March. He died in March. Okay. Did yeah. we even bring it up on the show? Yeah, I think we did. All right, then I'm getting that uh, <laughs> brain <did>. thing. <laughs> that brain thing is happening to me. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, that's got to be a movie, though, with that dude. He was great. He, yeah. yeah. And it was exciting to see somebody, else, you know, another country have that yeah, well, level of insanity. Right. It was a like, very rare that thing. That can happen very, yeah, other places, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a very rare thing for there to be a personality like that that emerges in Canada. Yeah. Well, sure. now you have the beautiful Trudeau. We have him and his pandas. Have you guys seen the pictures of him posing mm, with pandas? No. I have not seen. See, he he beat out somebody who was operating on a fear platform. Our last prime yeah. minister and um, and Canadians went the other way. They went for the the liberal model that poses with baby pandas and walks down the street during Pride with in a pink shirt. You know. Well, that is yeah. <laughs> oh, that's adorable. Yeah. It's my Facebook cover photo. <laughs> <laughs> Look at it all the time. But that is also <laughs> like what I think that people can't understand because. You know, in Africa or Europe or Asia, they've had one kind of government forever. And we do tend to swing back and forth. And we do tend to have both sides yeah. here. You know, crazy in one way and then crazy in the other way. This is The only difference here is that this is the first time that there's been, I think, someone who is running as an actual authoritarian dictator. Like, I feel like he's not even for democracy, right. you know, like, yeah. which is the first time that I've seen someone, you know, platform be anti-democratic I in wish such a way. that I could remember what the specific line was why why he said this but uh, in his speech he said something like I alone can fix this and I was <laughs> yeah, like I oh, alone that's... can do <laughs> I was like that's a very strange like normally a politician yeah. would not no, say that no. at all I no, alone I alone will be able my, to and do... my gut you yeah. know that just steers me right <laughs> and, and all the deals I make and look at my plane everyone don't you want a guy with a plane <laughs> I think it's going to be funny if he just gets more and com- more uncomfortable, like comfortable with it till he'll be like, well, you know how the Jews are, right? Everybody <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yes, yes, you have said it, you have said it. <laughs> but no, seriously, yeah. you know, he'll say something about Hillary. You know what I mean? You know. Oh, yeah. For you sure. know, but do you guys feel like he actually wants to work at all? Like, no. or what do you think he's just going to delegate everything or does he like if he, well, was he puts his name president. on stuff, yeah, that's, that's, yeah. that's how he runs his him. business. But he's also so he's like this crazy authoritarian type mm. who also seems so lazy at the same time. <laughs> it's like weird combination. I wonder if we can come up with a word like lazitarian, something that means <laughs> yeah. lazy, but wants everything their own way. Actually, I think it was me at 14, you know what I mean? <laughs> Where I just wanted things my way, but also wanted to be on the couch the entire time. <laughs> Have people running your lemonade stand for Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, but no, he does that thing like he does act like he's got the only drug in town. You know what yeah. I mean? Like he will not put anyone else over. The Republicans couldn't stop him. And they really did try. In their own way, they tried. Uh, uh, and I don't see the Democrats stopping them now that they're doing this two monkeys fucking a football act down in uh, Philadelphia right now. <laughs> this is just coming apart, coming apart on us. Oh, Who's speaking? T- Bernie Sanders is speaking tonight. Yes, Bernie is speaking tonight. Uh, who else? Cory Booker, say? Elizabeth Warren. Yeah. And uh, this is a big night. Michelle that's Obama. Big night. Yeah. Very yeah. Big that's a pretty night. all-star. Yeah. And that's the opening that's like night. A, yeah. That's like a just for laughs lineup. Well, it really is. It's very strong. But, you know, Obama is speaking and he hasn't allowed himself to do a great speech in eight years. And this could and he He's hates saving it. You yeah. Think? He hates Trump. Well, I feel like this is the comeback for him to because I think he's going to be the most powerful ex-president in history. I don't think that people realize what a great talker he is. And he's going to be able to go around and organize whoever the new group is like Koreans. You know what I mean? Just here's what we did. Uh, and and I think he's going to, you know, he's going to be a, a thorn in the side of the conservatives for a while. And I think that starts this week because he he has speeches that slay, just slay. Yeah. yeah. And he, he definitely has it in him. I, I don't know. I guess he he, he might have yeah pulled that back. Yeah. yeah. Or maybe you don't need. I mean, maybe that's not the person you have to be but, yeah, when you're in the White House. You, you don't stop have to selling do that. Hope, yeah. You know, so I say it's practical. But <laughs> did you guys remember when that uh, when they shut up that church and he went back? And oh. talked with those people, and yep. he in South Carolina. He, yeah, in yeah. South Carolina, and he starts going, "Amazing Grace, 
sweet thou art. And everyone's clapping. And then he starts to sing. Yeah. And the place exploded. Yeah. That dude's coming back, man. Yeah. That dude who, you know, has that Chris Rock, Dave Chappelle. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm going to go in and kill the room. Yeah. He he yeah, was he really play. yeah he <laughs> does it is the correct term and, and it is a lot better to do that like it's it's an easier gig than be the president and actually have to sit there and go over budgets just like why can't we have this that's the place you would have been though like, and he's coming out of this without a single scandal I mean in it, in two terms isn't that strange we didn't get a gate we Nothing. did not get a yeah. gate Zero. yeah Gateless. yeah. Which I kind of miss. I like a gate. I, <laughs> I like mean, I guess this gate. thing is kind of I mean, of look, gate. no matter who we get, we're getting a bunch of gates. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Either one of these. Oh, yeah, it's time they for are, gates. They are Whether it's yeah. Trump or uh, yeah. Clintons are back yeah. in. Those either one of them would hold someone's head under a tub until they're dead. <laughs> <laughs> like, you could just picture them. <laughs> <laughs> they have that kind of explosiveness. Yeah. Maybe they could co-chair this and it could just be a Clinton-Trump. They know each other very I well know. from New York. I, I mean, I'm not sure they'd be terribly. They, I, they certainly present themselves differently. But here's what scares me about Trump. This dude, he sleeps at home every night. Now, when he's president, he's going to keep wanting to come back to New York. We're never going to be able to drive in the city ever. Oh, no. Don't oh, say yeah. that. No, it's not going to happen. <laughs> he's come so where no matter where he's playing, he flies back to New York that night and crashes at his place. You mean he's not going to sleep at the White House? Well, he's not going to sleep at the White House ever. That's who plays that. This is something I hadn't considered. I thought it had a lot of aspects. You bring up an important point, Ron. He's got three stories at the top. He doesn't want to <laughs> live in the shack yeah. that is the White House. I wonder who will get to move in, though. You know, one of right. the kids. Right. He'll just like, yeah, I let, I let my daughter move in. Which one of the kids do you like best, by the way, out of all of them? Because I love Richie Rich, the little Baron. one. Yeah, Baron. Yeah, Baron. Baron is Baron great. Trump. Uh, so, it's like, mo- could he be more perfectly named? Uh, and <laughs> like Baron. Uh, Eric, I like Very too, because brand. when he gave his speech, he went like this from the stage. Dad, I love, 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 love you. And I'm on my house going, that's three more times than me and my brother have ever said that to my dad. We've <laughs> never gone that far, and he could yell that out in public. <laughs> hey, man, see, dude. <laughs> Thanks, too. Thanks for the sandwich, I meant. Nothing else. <laughs> this I was, think uh, yeah. Ivanka and Donald look really good together. Yeah. You make a handsome couple. Yeah. <laughs> Has someone done the porn, the the porn parody? Not yet. Wow, that's a mistake. Oh, shocking. <laughs> that's a mistake. Because there's a three way scene there waiting to happen. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Thanks for so much for stopping in today. It was a great article too. Oh, thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Uh, check it here. out on the Interbang. Uh, Jess Solomon. She's going to be performing uh, Friday, August fifth at QED in Astoria at the Transplant Show. Go to JessSolomon.com for additional dates. That's it for us. Join uh, me and Pendulette when we uh, with an unmasked when we get back. From Montreal, what's the dates for that? That's happening Wednesday, August 3rd at the Sirius XM Studios. Go to theinterrobang.com for a chance of free tickets. He's literally one of the most interesting conversationalists I've ever met. And uh, we'll see you all again in 1974. Ladies and gentlemen, the evening is over. We hope you all enjoyed yourselves, and we'll see you all again in 1974. Good evening! Good evening!